Recently, there seems to be a lot of criticism of the obvious corollary that the FBI is in so many cases arresting people on vague suspicions of unspecified wrongdoing and can't prove anything. Prosecutions may be struggling, but it never seems to even dawn on the FBI that the people they are choosing to railroad might in fact not be guilty in the first place. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the Oklahoma State Supreme Court again ordered the removal of a statue of the Ten Commandments from the state capitol grounds after denying an appeal on Monday. The nine justices turned down an appeal from the Oklahoma Capital Preservation Commission to rehear the case less than one month after the court originally ordered for the monument to be taken down. The court said the Oklahoma State Constitution in Article 2, Section 5 bans the use of public property for the benefit of any religious purpose. Even though the Ten Commandments monument was paid for with private funds, the court said it is on public property and benefits or supports a system of religion and is therefore unconstitutional. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt's office on behalf of the commission filed the petition for a rehearing arguing the monument should remain, citing a 2005 case in which the U.S. Supreme Court said the presence of the Ten Commandments on the grounds of the Texas State Capitol did not violate the U.S. Constitution's Establishment Clause. Chief Justice John Reif wrote in Monday's ruling, we carefully Fully considered the arguments of the commission and find no merit warranting a grant of rehearing. In early July, Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon said she would consider a move to rewrite the Oklahoma Constitution to make the monument legally permissible on state grounds. In Survivor Max by Dobby Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports the U.S. Olympic Committee on Monday rescinded Boston's bid to host the 2024 Olympic Games after the mayor said his city's taxpayers could not afford to host the large-scale event. The move was met with relief by Massachusetts officials who had faced an active opposition campaign that fought the idea of hosting the Summer Games, forecast to cost more than $8.6 billion from the moment the USOC in January picked Boston over other major U.S. cities including Los Angeles, Washington, and San Francisco. Francisco. The USOC said it still hoped to pick a U.S. candidate city to compete for the Games against a lineup including Paris, Rome, Budapest, and Hamburg, Germany. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. According to sources, all 6.5 million residents of Indiana spontaneously formed thousands of perfectly uniform rows throughout the state Monday morning and established a collective consciousness. Saying, we are Indiana, the new hive mind talked and moved in unison, with citizens working together to build a massive geometric superstructure in downtown Indianapolis where they would gather to sleep, breed, and feed. All the for Indiana. The collective state went on to report that soon Ohio, Illinois, Michigan, Kentucky, and Canada would all become Indiana. Persons close to Phoenix area friends Jake Welter and Mike Seflin confirmed Friday that the two men are absolutely incapable of greeting each other like normal human beings. Sources say the two full-grown men simply cannot walk into a room and shake each other's hands, relying instead on elaborate dances, forced pop culture references, and extended fake fighting. Neither Welter nor Seflin was available for comment as they were busy pretending to rip each other other's faces off. Free Talk Live. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us on the radio waves here at 855-450-FREE. Mike Tyson is getting ready to launch... A Bitcoin ATM. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Uh, with you in the studio tonight, here it's Ian. And Cardan. And 
and King Mark the First. Ian, uh, would you please read that tweet? Is it there's the any tweet from Mike Tyson? Uh huh. Coming soon. I guess I could write it in his voice, but I'm not really good at doing Mike Tyson. Mark was pretty good at it. Uh, coming uh, I'm soon. Not, Mike Tyson isn't coming up here and kicking my butt. Mike <laughs> Tyson. Go right ahead, pal. It's too, it's too cold up here. He's not coming up here. <laughs> well, what? Com. Coming soon. I'll read it again. MikeTysonBitcoin.com. Changing the way we get change. That's from at Mike Tyson. That's a verified Twitter account. They got the little check mark on Twitter that shows you that that person is actually who they claim to be. Uh -huh. How do they know? They have some way of verifying. You know, okay. oh, see, someone claims kind of, I'm Mike Tyson. They call the manager. You know, there's got to be some way to do it. I Somebody wonder what kind there. of change he's talking about. Like change, like spare change, or maybe he's he's like, screw Obama. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because the, you don't I'll, get I'll change. Bring you got some real change. You don't get change with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You pay the Ex exact, exact amount. amount. Exactly. That's one of the nice things about Bitcoin is you don't I'm have sorry, to wait Mark, for I'll somebody to give you a change. I'm just saying that there's a guy out there that has the real Mark Edge uh, Twitter account, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he's a lot funnier than I am. I'll give him that. But, yeah. Um, I don't know what it takes to go through the verification process. I don't know if you have to have a certain minimum number of followers on Twitter. I've never really looked into that. So Mike Tyson, real deal, saying MikeTysonBitcoin.com. The website's there. Mike Tyson Bitcoin ATM coming August 2015. He's got a big uh, picture of Mike glowering at the camera. With uh, his arms crossed, looking and tough. And his tat. Coming August 2015, Mike Tyson's fastest knockout in the ring was 30 seconds. The Mike Tyson Bitcoin ATM can turn your cash into Bitcoin in under 20 seconds. And then there's a place where you can put in your email address. Because those two more. facts are relevant. Well, I mean, it's Mike Tyson. How else are you going to sell a Bitcoin <laughs> I don't know. machine? Uh, Mike Tyson, former boxer, this is from motherboard.vice.com, and noted pigeon fan is getting into Bitcoin. He's a fan of pigeons? According to, apparently, there's a video. According to a promo website, Tyson advertised in a tweet over the weekend, Tyson-themed Bitcoin ATMs will be coming to Las Vegas in August. Now, Tyson isn't the first celebrity to get behind Bitcoin, but ATMs emblazoned with Tyson's familiar toothy grin. Could very well be the first example of a good old-fashioned celebrity branded partnership for virtual currencies. Hmm. I think Tyson will become the dominant brand in the ATM space, said the CEO of Bitcoin Direct LLC, the company providing the actual machines. That's Peter Klamka. The Tom Brady ATM will be compared to the Tyson ATM. The LeBron James ATM will be compared to the Tyson ATM. Before you let the thought of streets... Do we have these other ATMs, or are these the imaginary ATMs? I think ATMs he's imagining that other sports stars will be endorsing Bitcoin vending machines, which seems kind of hard to believe at this point. We needed to get Trump on the Bitcoin bandwagon. We need his uh, uh, vote of encouragement. Do you think he's into that kind of thing? I highly doubt it. You know, old, these old money people, you know, they don't see the new ways. Oh, I'm sure that he doesn't, unless he could make some money off of it, and then maybe he would get on that bandwagon. Although I did hear that uh, Richard Branson was involved in some kind of Bitcoin shindig, like a convention for the Bitcoin elite that was held on some kind of island that Richard Branson owns. Mm -hmm. I heard something about this. I, I don't know if Roger Veer was invited, but I suspect uh, he, was. he was. Just so we you, weren't. So you know about this then, Mark? I, I, I'm, I'm sworn not to reveal it. I'm sorry. Really? So you've heard something about I this? I can't then. tell you anything more. <laughs> <laughs> Are you BSing me? Do you see the crown on my head? I do, and you yeah. look very silly. Thank you. Uh, so going on here, before you let the thought of streets lined with celebrity-branded Bitcoin ATMs sink in, though, consider this. Bitcoin Direct, the, web the uh, company making these, doesn't even have a website. This point, as well as Bitcoin Direct's convoluted corporate history, has some Bitcoin news outlets wondering if the whole endeavor is actually a scam that Tyson is unwittingly being led into. Klamka, the CEO of the company, has a long history of wrangling celebrity endorsements, starting with his days as a web entrepreneur in the 1990s. In the year 2000, he was quoted in a New York Times article on dot-com millionaires about all the calls he received from regretful exes and plebes, a.k.a. old friends, after he made his money. Over the years, Klamka has owned a constellation of loosely associated companies with names that keep changing. His first company, PTN Media, released Claudia Schiffer and Michael Jordan-branded Palm handhelds in the late 1990s and changed its name to Legend Mobile in the 2000s, which later became Cephas Holdings Incorporated. Cephas was a publicly traded company, a penny stock, with a low market cap that was once suspected of being part of a pump-and-dump scheme. 
until the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission temporarily suspended trading their stocks in March of 2015. The reason was that as of 2015, the last financial information they published was from 2013. CFIS then went private, and Bitcoin Direct LLC was registered in Nevada in April, a month after trading on CFIS stocks were suspended. At some point, you have to decide, are you going to Where do to I sign up? <laughs> Klamka said, at some point, you have to decide, are you going to spend $100,000 a year doing SEC filings, or are you going to spend that money buying Bitcoins? Klamka said, when asked about the suspension, he says, we as a company had to decide whether we were in the stock business or the Bitcoin business. Before the SEC drama, Klamka started another Bitcoin company called Bitcoin Brands Incorporated, which traded under Cephas's ticker until it was suspended. Despite a corporate history like a Russian nesting doll, Bitcoin Direct and Bitcoin Brands both have legitimate business. Bitcoin Direct set up a Bitcoin ATM at a mixed martial arts gym called One Kick Nicks in Vegas last year. And you can purchase shirts from UFC fighter Ian Uncle Creepy McCall's website with Bitcoin, courtesy of Bitcoin Brands. That you can buy shirts that Isn't say, there a UFC fighter named Ian Freeman, too? There is. Yeah. That you can buy shirts that say things like, keep calm and creep on with Bitcoin is pretty incredible. But even so, Tyson's entry into the cryptocurrency game somehow tops it all for all-out weirdness. So look out. Within the next month or so, apparently Mike Tyson Bitcoin vending machines or Bitcoin ATMs are going to be hitting the streets in Las Vegas is this the beginning of a trend of uh, Bitcoin or like branded Bitcoin vending machines? Could Mike Tyson somehow lead, lend credibility to the Bitcoin universe, bring new people on board? <laughs> or maybe, or maybe he's another Alex Jones type who's actually uh, bringing it all down. He's actually, uh, you know. You think? Ty wait, who's the Alex Jones type? Tyson. Mike Tyson. Yeah. So you're you gonna have this, to explain to me the correlation. So here. you have the, well, you have this silly uh, celebrity. Mm -hmm. Uh, who now is getting behind Bitcoin, who everyone says is supposedly silly. Uh, Alex Jones brings lots of good points up, but he's he does it in a very uh, strange manner. So you're saying that Tyson is being brought on to try to sink Bitcoin's popularity? Uh-huh. Exactly. I don't know. It doesn't seem like, well, I mean, I guess you could... <laughs> well, it's I bewildering. Like the it's a strange story. I like the story. sentence here where it says... Is Mike, uh, was that which, out of the article, is Mike Tyson being brought on to lend credibility? Was that your question? No, that question? was me. I asked okay, that yeah. question. Okay. I mean, because he is going to bring a new audience to Bitcoin, that's for sure. Yeah, yep, that's true. Uh, I imagine Mike Tyson, let's see how many. I just uh, wonder whether that question's ever been uttered before. Has my, Mike Tyson been brought on to lend credibility? He's got 4.9 million followers on Twitter. Sweet. I mean, that's nothing to shake a stick it at. It is there. not. Well, how many, yeah, how many uh, followers does Alex Jones have? I don't and, think and it, they're all it can't nuts. be as many. Can't be near as many. Yeah. Well, clearly, Mike Tyson knows more about marketing than than we do, than I do. I mean, it's certainly true if Mike Tyson's visage is on the side of a uh, vending machine or your, something like that, it's going to catch your attention. Right. It's going to be a lot, catch a lot more people's attention than Ian Freeman's picture on the side of a vending yeah, machine. Please don't put my picture on the side of a vending machine. Well, that you would, would need really a face tacky. tat first. Right. Yeah, that's true. He's got that. Like a peace sign on your it's forehead. Very unique. I don't know. It's a just a bizarro story that you, just, you never really expected to see something like that happen, but I guess it's the Bitcoin world, so all kinds of weird stuff can occur. It's a bizarro story, all right. I I don't know what to do with it. Um, I can. I would have to say that this is only going to bring uh, good things for Bitcoin. It's not going to bring anything bad. Yeah, I think you're right about that, and we'll we'll see if we hear more about it or if it just vaporizes and never really comes uh, to fruition. Uh, but right now, intriguing, that's for sure. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. It was out yesterday uh, kind of heckling at this Chris Christie character. The video is up right now at freekeen.com, and he was actually the second presidential candidate to come into Keene, New Hampshire over the last two months. The first one was Bernie Sanders, and there's a lot of talk Apparently, even among Liberty people, that this that Bernie Sanders is somehow worth looking at, and I don't understand it. Uh, there's a story here from the Hit and Run blog on Reason that gives you his viewpoint on immigration. And if you love Liberty, this guy is not a friend of yours. Uh, we'll share that coming up here, and your thoughts as well are welcome at 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. 
I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. As if chlorine in our water weren't bad enough, now they're adding ammonia? It's true. Some municipalities are now adding ammonia plus chlorine to your water supply. It's a disinfectant called chloramine. But with a trusted Big Berkey water filter, you can keep chloramine out of your water. New NSF EPA certified lab tests show EPA Berkey water filters remove chloramines, pharmaceuticals, BPA, pesticides, bacteria and viruses, all forms of fluoride, and much more. Big Berkey water filters are the original and most trusted on the market. The gold standard in water purification. And our filters last for years at less than two cents per gallon. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get your Big Berkey today. Call 1-877-99-BERKEY or click BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeene.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Coming up, an Oklahoma prosecutor has been using asset confiscation to pay off his loans. And that's a no-no. Conan's got the story about that also on the way in Detroit. Hundreds turned out for the debut of the Baphomet statue, the Satanic Temple, uh, has revealed to the public now. We'll tell you a little bit about that. They they really did something interesting to weed out potential infiltrators and protesters to this event. Uh, I was pretty surprised by this, and we'll tell you about that coming up as well. Uh, Bernie Sanders is back in the news. Not, I'm sure... Uh, to the pleasure of people who thought he might have been a cool guy who was he- trying to help the poor, right? Because Bernie Sanders is... Uh, and, and in the wars, Ian. He's all about ending the wars. Well, he did take a decent position on Edward Snowden, apparently. Mm-hmm. I don't know what his position is on war. Is he supposed to He's got a lot of decent war? positions. Is he, is he anti-war? 
He says he is, but, well, I don't believe but it. he ended up funding all the, the all of the the military the, stuff, all these military uh, endeavors that we've been. Well, he the last voted decade. against the invasion of Iraq, but then voted for the funding of it, which I'd is kind say of that's an indicator that this guy would probably, if he were elected, would say, "Well, I didn't believe we should have got in, but now that we're in, we got to finish it." I, I don't know what he's going to say. Yeah, I think I feel like I've heard something like that about him, but we do actually have what he said about immigration here. In just a few moments, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Cell 411 is a decentralized micro-social network that allows you to manage, create, and respond to alerts and emergencies in real time. Now, obviously, you can still call 911 and, you know, roll the, d- the dice on whether the government is going to provide you with a decent response to whatever your emergency is. But you can't call 911 if you are getting kidnapped by the police. You can't call 911 if you are cop blocking and you want your friends to know about it. Now, there's some other stuff that the Cell 411 app is just perfect for. It's really designed, in my opinion, it's designed for activists. But even if you're a neighborhood watch group, which is kind of like activism, this is perfect for you. You can report that you're seeing, you're observing crime being committed with this app. You can report medical emergencies uh, with Cell 411. It's a brilliant app. It's in version 1.0 and it works right out of the box. Uh, you do need to have other friends who are using Cell 411 in order for it to be useful. So you should get it and then encourage your family members to get it and your friends at your activist network. If you got a neighborhood watch group, this thing is perfect. You can create an unlimited number of cells or groups of users to alert in case of emergency. So if you only want to send an alert to your family members, you can do that. If you want to send it to everybody you know that's on Cell 411, you can do that as well. This would be great for, um, say, you know, small towns doing uh, mutual aid for just just calling out the volunteer fire departments. Sure. Um, you know, this would be all kinds of clubs. You will know who's responding to you even. So when you send your alert, presuming you're able to check your phone after you've sent it, uh, then you'll see, oh, so-and-so is responding, and here's how far away they are. There's GPS coordinates that can help you find the individual that is sending said alert if you're the one res- uh, responding to it. So go and check it out. It's on the Android Play Store. It's called Cell, C-E-L-L, 411. Now, it's going to be available for iPhone as soon as it can be. They've put it into the process that gets it approved for availability for iPhones and iOS devices. That hasn't quite happened yet. We'll let you know when it does. Meantime, Android users can go and download Cell 411, C-E-L-L, 411. I think it's all of 99 cents, which is going to help them develop more uh, changes to the app. There's going to be some cool developments coming out for it soon. This is just the first version. I'm excited about it. Mary's in Minnesota. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mary. Mary in Minnesota. We have Mary going once. Mary in Minnesota going twice. I'll tell you what. There's sometimes problems with the uh, the board at the beginning of the show over on the network side. Board out might be busy doing something. So we'll see if Mary's back there here in a little bit. So we were talking about, uh, br- briefly, about Bernie Sanders. And, and if you do want to comment on Mike Tyson backing Bitcoin, I think that's very interesting. You're certainly welcome to do so. Uh, but Bernie Sanders calls himself, according to Reason.com's Robbie Sove, an international democratic socialist. Once a $15 an hour minimum wage, he would make college tuition free, with quotes around, uh, around it. <laughs> likes. Right. Six- if you think Bernie Sanders is going to make something free... You need to check your economics. Uh, He likes single-payer health care and utterly opposes relaxing stringent immigration laws because that's something right-wing corporate billionaires support. The far-left presidential candidate recently elaborated on these views during a sit-down interview with Vox editor-in-chief Ezra Klein, a particularly illuminating moment that they highlight here for us. Ezra Klein asks, says rather, you said being a democratic socialist means a more international view. I think if you take global poverty that seriously, it leads you to conclusions that in the U.S. are considered out of political bounds. Things like sharply raising the level of immigration we permit, even up to a level of open borders, about sharply increasing, and then he's interrupted by Bernie Sanders, who says, open borders? No, that's a Koch brothers proposal. (laughs) Who are the Koch brothers? Well, there's uh, those are the guys that fund you, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the idea. Um, there have been some Coke-funded organizations that, over the years, have on and off bought some advertising here on Free Talk Live. I don't believe they're currently buying any advertising. Not that I know of. Yep. 
Um, but Coke is what now, Mark? Coke is a couple of guys uh, who are, eh, you know, ideologically driven to some extent. They're called conservatives. I can't tell whether they're conservatives or libertarians. But, um, you know, regardless, they... Uh, they fund some projects. Um, there's all kinds of liberal funders, too, and um, they're just creating boogeymen as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, there's a lot of fear around the Koch brothers. There's actually some paranoia around whether or not they are intimately involved with funding the Free State Project and funding our moves up here. And I'm sorry. People have but- accused me of having my house paid for by the Koch brothers. Uh, it's ridiculous. No. Yeah, that's that's pretty ridiculous. They did not pay for any kind of funding to move us up here. Again, whatever contracts we had with their funded organizations were fairly small over the over the years. But nonetheless, Bernie doesn't like them. And so Ezra Klein, the editor of uh, Vox, goes on to say, really? Sanders re- responds, of course. That's a right wing proposal, which essentially says there is no United States. But but it would make. Excuse me, says Sanders. It would make a lot of global poor richer, wouldn't it, says Ezra Klein. Of course, he's right. Openborders.org suggests that there would be a one-time doubling of the world GDP if uh, borders were sort of done away with. Um, Really, all they are, I mean, in in the case of Bernie Sanders, all they are is, uh, you know, they're forcing me to pay for the poor people in San Diego, but... He doesn't give a darn about the poor people in Tijuana. Apparently not. I don't really understand this line of thinking. What's wrong with the poor people in El Paso? Or what's what's right with the poor people in El Paso and wrong with the poor people in Ciudad Juarez? The guy's a nationalist. They're he not, calls- uh, yeah, yeah, they're not our poor people, right. Mark. Who's our? Well, <laughs> the U.S. is that we. Apparently, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, he's got an arbitrary set of uh, boundaries that he's decided are more important than the rest of the world. He's no different than any other, you know, right wing conservative that's been pounding the pulpit to have immigration. Well, Tom Hartman, the radio talk show host, was on a panel with you where you, um, where immigration was brought up. You took the position of open borders. Yes. And he said that your position was crazy. He did. And it is crazy. And he was agreeing. When you with- want to subsidize poverty, you want to subsidize. Subsidize, uh, you know, inefficiency. When you want to subsidize these things, yes, opening the border and letting people come here and get whatever they want, um, you know, whatever subsidies they want, that is crazy. You do have to draw a line. However, if you believe in human freedom and if you believe that people should be able to build a better life for themselves and their family, then they should be able to cross the borders they want as long as they're not looking for handouts. How do you feel about it? 855 450 free. And if you were a if you're a conservative type who is for closed borders, how's it feel to be on the same side as Bernie Sanders? Politicians make uh, politics makes for strange bedfellows, huh? It's free talk live. More coming up. All right, so suddenly Walmart, eBay, Amazon, everybody wants to ban the rebel flag. Well, the rebel flag is an important part of American history. The rebel flag is still a long-standing symbol of Southern pride and Southern heritage. So if the big retailers want to play into political correctness and try to deny the history of America, let them. Go to ourflags.com. That's R, like rebel, R, the letter R, ourflags.com. Get your rebel flag before they actually do outlaw the things, huh? Ourflags.com. That's ourflags.com. Go now. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. 
If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Don't worry about things you can't control. Isn't that what they always say? But it's about impossible to avoid worrying about what's going on these days. The government has used the war on guns, the war on drugs, and the war on terrorism to tear our Bill of Rights to shreds. But you can fight back. The Tenth Amendment Center has proven it, racking up major victories. For example, when the U.S. government claimed authority in the NDAA to have the military kidnap and detain Americans without trial, the nullifiers got a law passed in California, declaring the state's refusal to ever participate in any such thing. Their latest project is offnow.org, nullifying the National Security Agency. They've already gotten model legislation introduced in California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, meant to limit the power of the NSA to spy on Americans in those states. We'd be fools to wait around for the U.S. Congress or courts to roll back Big Brother. Our best chance is nullification and interposition on the state level. Go to offnow.org, print out that model legislation, and get to work nullifying the NSA. The hero Edward Snowden has risked everything to give us this chance. Let's take it. Offnow.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Back with more Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free. 855 450 free, whether it's Mike Tyson getting into the Bitcoin universe or Bernie Sanders lining up with the uh, the hard right conservatives. Bernie Sanders saying that uh, it would be crazy to allow more people to come to the United States to make a better life for themselves. We've got the actual quotes that I'll continue with here in a moment. And of course, with you in studio tonight, it's Ian. And Conan. And King Mark the First. We're halfway, uh, top way, uh, Topless Tuesdays, or two thirds of the way to Topless Tuesdays. Mark is probably too good for this, as now he has apparently deemed himself a king. Uh, but Conan and I are holding up the uh, Topless Tuesday mantle here in the studio. Conan's doing hold- a much better job at this than I am. I, I hold would. it up all week. Yeah, is that right? Oh yeah, it's hot I'm out there. Pretty much, yeah. I'm pretty much topless all all week long as well. So it's nice to have an excuse to do it here on the guys. No one cares, really. <laughs> There's somebody out there who cares a little too much, and they're probably watching the cam right now at cam.freetalklive.com. That much is true. Uh, so anyway, back to the story here about old Bernie Sanders. Oh, but first, I want to tell you how to get Bitcoin. You don't have to wait until a Mike Tyson Bitcoin vending machine or Bitcoin ATM comes to your town they're only going to vegas first and who knows how long it's going to take if that even happens who knows how long it's going to take them to roll that out across the country all right so you can't wait on mike tyson you can just go right now to expresscoin.com and you can get bitcoin with money order or a check they're a licensed money services business it's fast safe easy and inexpensive they'll even sell you other alternative uh, alternative currencies like litecoin and dogecoin expresscoin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies you can get started at expresscoin.com whether you're in the u.s or canada they can help you expresscoin.com use coupon code ftl and you'll get up to 40 dollars worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all which is awesome so you can get your first up to forty dollars worth of Bitcoin with no transfer fee. Where are you going to get that? Expresscoin.com coupon code FTL. Like what business makes money not having a fee? Well, I don't know. Expresscoin does have a fee, Mark. It's if you buy more than forty dollars, sure. you get charged a three percent fee, which is a very, very reasonable one. I don't think you'll ever find a Bitcoin vending machine that charges less than five. Uh, percent. So it's it's great. Expresscoin.com. Coming up, uh, we'll talk about the Oklahoma state prosecutor using asset confiscation to pay their loans off. But more right now from Reason Magazine's uh, hit and run blog, Bernie Sanders in an interview with Vox editor-in-chief Ezra Klein. Now, Ezra Klein apparently jumped to the conclusion 
that Bernie Sanders would be in favor, given that he apparently calls himself an internationalist, as Bernie Sanders. That okay. by calling himself something like that, you might jump to the conclusion, as the editor of Vox did, that this gentleman is in favor of getting rid of the idea of borders. He's an internationalist. I think that's what the definition of an internationalist is. And, well, I don't have the definition in front of me, but that sounds believable. Being a communist from high school, I can tell oh, you yeah? that uh, an internationalist, as I understood the definition in the uh, mid, late, mid to late 80s, um, to be exactly that. Well, Bernie Sanders interrupts the uh, man just to bat it right back at him and then further says that it would make everybody in America poorer. You're doing away with the concept of a nation state, and I don't think there's any country in the world that believes in that. Well, duh. <laughs> of course the countries won't believe in that. The governments that are in those you know, places, those are sort of what are the countries, if you will. The people running the governments of the world, the 180 or 190 or 200 governments of the world, of course they don't want to end the nation state. That's, that means an end to their power. It means an end to a lot of their control. That, so, that right uh, there is proof that governments across the globe are not there for the people who they say they represent. Just that right there. That's just, uh, you know. The fact that they wouldn't want to uh, end borders. their nation, you mean? Right. Yeah. That, that, like you said, they'll lose their power if they did so. Right. And well, a lot of people would claim that uh, you, in fact, are representing, uh, you know, your constituents by not opening borders because— some people would say that, uh, you know, that uh, they're taking our jobs. So, um, you know, preventing labor from moving geographically, um, putting essentially, uh, you know, economic controls on labor uh, is beneficial to people who are allowed to work in the same way that, uh, for instance, um, advocating for licensed uh, radio stations is beneficial. Advocating for radio licenses is beneficial to licensed radio stations and a detriment to pirate radio stations. That's mm. essentially what it is. It's licensure. Well, I don't agree with the the claim that it's beneficial to the licensed radio stations. I don't I, think, make, I don't know what the claim. I I would not be able to. Someone would have to show me a study. I'm just saying that's yeah. the claim. Yeah, I don't believe that claim because licensed radio stations are ultimately dying off because of the licensure because. The government keeps com competition out of the marketplace. It's a slow death, but that's what I think we're seeing play out. So your argument is is that uh, since there's less competition in the marketplace, that um, what we see is people moving towards uh, digital listening formats uh, because mm. they're not being provided with uh, the the kind of uh, audio that they want to get from from radio from stations. radio. Okay, maybe I mean certainly you can. It seems like you can make that argument with Pandora, right? Like. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I, I don't spend much time tuning in to uh, music stations. Mm -hmm. I do, however, now and then click on YouTube or Pandora and listen to some music. Mm. So that's how that is for me. Um, when it comes to talk content, because it's because talk radio, because state radio stations are more convenient to tune in, I generally find myself listening to talk radio in the car. Mm -hmm. I wish that I had more options in little rural New Keene, New Hampshire, than you know NPR and whatever they're. That's putting just on the it. You don't have very many options right. because of the FCC. So back to the uh, the issue of immigration here. Bernie Sanders continuing with his quote. This is from Vox's interview with him. He says, I don't think there's any country in the world that believes in doing away with the concept of the nation state. And hold it, it, who doesn't have that one? Bernie Sanders says, says, I don't think there's any country in the world countries that, don't think that things. believes in that. Countries don't believe. Countries are dirt. They are trees. <laughs> they are places where you grow food. Um, if you're talking about individuals, individuals may think things, you know, you, you can aggregate numbers of what people think um, in a group. Like, for instance, you could say, what is America's favorite color? And you could ask everybody on, say, I don't know, the, in the Western Hemisphere, um, what their favorite cover, color is. And then you could say America's favorite color is blue. But what that does is it disenfranchises all the people who have all the other colors that they like, um, you know, that, that, that they prefer. So I say that that's a crappy thing to say he goes on here uh he says that if you believe in a nation state or in a country called the united states or uk or denmark or any other country you have an obligation in my view to do everything we can to help poor people what right-wing people in this country would love is an open border policy bring in all kinds of people work for two or three dollars an hour that would be great for them i don't believe in that I think we have to raise wages in this country. I think we have to do everything we can to create millions of jobs. I never knew that that was a right-wing thing. Where is he coming up with this information? I People thought, like us. 
He's literally calling us right wingers because I believe that free people should be able to cross the borders of free countries and contract with other free people if that's what they wish to do. And that no stinking, crazy socialist politician in Washington, D.C. or Burlington should be able to tell you any different. Like, he is a full-on, you know, economy-controlling nut job, and oh, yeah. he understands, at the very least, he's smart enough to understand that advocating for free people to move across borders of free countries freely and then contract freely with people that they meet— over there, he understands what the results of that so, are. So question, if we're the right-wingers here on this show, who are all the Republican presidential candidates? What, what are they? Are they, <laughs> well, are, unless he's just, unless he is making the connection with, that all, pretty much all politicians are on the same team and they're all, you know, Everybody work, does working this. for the same goal. Status, maybe well, statism. Sta right, he's a sta he's a statist, and we're not. Um, but right. everybody does this. Everybody will take people um, and put them in groups and then try to make themselves the underdog. We do it on this show. People do it in their day to day lives. That's what Bernie Sanders doing. It is a transparent, pathetic uh, ruse to uh, get support for himself. Um, what he needs to do is he needs to tell me why. Free people from Mexico or Honduras or El Salvador should not be able to come here and afford themselves of a better life if they choose to work. I'm not talking about handouts. And that's where that's where he he's stuck because he's all about the handout, right? Mm. And, you know, Bernie Sanders, for more free stuff. By the way, I'm running for president right now, people. I'm running for president on the sole plank that I will give out double what Bernie Sanders does. Right in Mark Edge. Come November uh, right. 2016. Stand by. We'll come back with more on this Sanders character, and hopefully he'll come back to Keene, because uh, now I finally have a good question to ask him. 855-450-FREE. This message is for home intruders. The cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard-earned property. Criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9259. LiveWatch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9259. That's 1-800-670-9259. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. .com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com.
You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us toll free 855. 450 free. Maybe you want to comment on Bernie Sanders. He is in the news at Reason.com for essentially sounding like a right-wing uh, conservative that you'd expect. You'd expect somebody you know, from the right side of the aisle to be saying the things that Bernie Sanders is saying about locking down the borders and you know, restricting immigration. But that just goes to show there's not a dime's worth of difference between the left and the right in the United States. Well, hold on. Um, so I've heard... Uh Sanders uh, described as a left-wing populist. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that this is a better definition than a of socialist? him than a socialist. Like, he'll wear proudly the term socialism and then essentially define it as he wishes. And that's that's fine. I mean, it's not like people don't do that when it comes to political labels. Well, uh, I mean, all the conservatives are socialists, too. They just won't wear the term. Um, I, I don't disagree with that. But yeah. um, when it comes to the term populist, no one will wear that because that, that term, just means you're saying what's popular, right? It 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 it, it smears you with sort of this, uh, you know, I'll blow with the wind, flip flopper kind of, uh, <laughs> um, you know, thing. And and it, this is a pretty smart position for him to take because he takes enough strong positions in the direction of the left that they're not going to drop him for what they might perceive of as a right wing position. And the right wingers will be um, what he's doing is, is essentially courting the right wing here. To some extent, yep. and taking people who are like, yeah, our jobs. I'm the working kind, and they're taking, you know, like it's all about the working class, that they kind of thing. Took our jobs, right? You know, I'm supposed to believe <laughs> that this guy's working class, um, you know, or whatever, and it, as as if his class matters to me in the least, mm. right? Like, I, if somebody's a principled libertarian, I don't care if they make no money or if they're a multimillionaire, because it's not about class for me. It's about a set of principles. Um, but you know, he, he essentially is just showing himself to be a left wing populist here. Um, mm. And by the way. Uh, I think that uh, Trump is showing himself to be a right-wing populist, and they'll yep. both take a similar position. I, well, I, I buy that for sure. Yeah, they I, think, both, I think they're both uh, 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 both sides of the same quarter. Did you see the article today? I didn't know the New Yorker uh, did satire. I always thought they were more of a serious uh, newspaper, but they actually had an article uh, since you brought up Trump. That was, uh, it was, uh, you know what? I don't think I, I, you know, I guess I didn't put it in my show prep. Anyway, the headline was something to the extent of uh, the other 15 candidates uh, in order to deal with Trump have released a sex tape or something like that, you know, because apparently yeah. Trump's getting all this attention. And it's then, funny. Yeah. It, it was, was hilarious. A lot funnier to read the article. In order to get, uh, you know, more attention, all the other 15 Republican candidates put together a, <laughs> a sex, a sex tape. tape. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Individual sex tapes? No, or those all 15, 15 of them are in the same. Yeah. Like that they're all room. together. I think I think that the was same the same hotel room. Yeah. Oh, that'd be funny neat. stuff. So uh, so anyway, back to the story about. It'd be Bernie. more entertaining to watch the most of the stuff that we've gotten from them. <laughs> well, I wouldn't watch it, but I'd talk about it on the show. <laughs> Reason.com's blog continues. Uh, they were talking about an interview with Bernie Sanders with uh, Ezra Klein, who's the Vox editor in chief. And uh, Klein seems genuinely surprised by Sanders' very anti-immigrant position. And to his credit, says Reason, Klein pushed back against Sanders by pointing out that the poor people of the United States are actually quite wealthy 
when compared with poor people of other countries. I know. This is laughable, right? Like, poor people in the United States have color televisions. They got air conditioning. Smartphones and, and, you know, all these things. I mean, basically, in this country, I don't... Surely there's somebody who violates this uh, particular rule, but basically in this country, anybody who wants a smartphone has one already. And then we're calling them poor. Um, I've I've heard the terminology that one in five children is... uh, uh, hunger, starving. Mark. No, no, not starving. They use some term like sort of they're, that they're um, e- nutritionally endangered in U- the U.S. In the U.S., nutritionally endangered. They can't say hungry because that would be a GD lie. Right. What they have to they're say is too much food. Nutritionally in- right. They're fat <laughs> <Yeah>. or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, whatever. You're the taking term- too much nutrition in, son. <laughs> You're gonna need to cut back. So uh, I mean, you know, like. Yes. Well, I think that Ian and I on the show here are both nutritionally uh, uh, de- uh well we're not we're not getting enough, huh? You could argue that I'm not getting enough nu- nutrients. I'm I fairly do, small. I do just fine. Yeah. Uh, but we would be on that list. To Pro- his, probably. Yeah, you might be right about that. So Klein pointed out again that uh, they're wealthy when compared to the poor people of other countries. In fact, if you compare the poor people in the U.S. today to the poor people in the U.S. 100 years ago, they're so much more wealthy. I mean, you know, 100 years ago, air conditioning didn't exist. But yeah, who, yeah, who doesn't have an air conditioner these days? Anybody that doesn't have power, I guess. So this but is something that, they I, do. I've kind of been working on in my mind. There's a great deal of talking um, going on regarding the uh, the sort of, and, and I'd love listeners to chime in on this one, please, at 855-450-3733. And I'm not firm on this. I'm just trying to come up with something. Um. Uh, there's a great deal of talk about sort of the the earning gap um, between rich and poor uh, in this country and how it's getting bigger and bigger and how the very, very rich, not just the 1%, but the 0.01% um, are making so much more than sort of the rest of us. And I guess, you know, like, I guess the question I have is, is does it make a difference what other people make if you are progressively wealthier and wealthier, if your life is better and better? So, you know, 10 years ago, I didn't have a smartphone and I didn't have a flat screen TV. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I didn't, you know, we didn't buy in my household all the organic foods and and those kind of things. Okay. Um, So, I mean, one could say that we've gotten wealthier in that way. I would say that's an accurate uh, statement. And uh, whereas, and and this is, I mean, I think this is mostly true for people is, is that there are, you know... If you look at their lives 10 years ago and look at them now, that generally their lives are better from a standpoint of sort of the have and have nots, as it were. But it's like looking at these other people and how they're doing, that's just... It, well, the, the Bible was pretty clear about the seven dev- deadly sins and where, you know, envy was on that list and what coveting was all about. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what the other the next guy has if your life is getting better. Mm. And, of course, and, of course, greed ties into that as well. Yeah. And it's well, it's it's true, but I mean, wealthy people, um, you, you know, their very fact that they have a bunch of money is going to be good for you. If you live next door to somebody who's very wealthy, it, there's going to be a certain amount of that stuff that just kind of rubs off, right? Yeah, that's right. True. I mean, someone has to build their yachts, uh, right? So you well, absolutely. So someone's got to be out there trucking the the lumber from the from the Home Depot to the yacht factory, and maybe some guys out there building them, and it's the same thing. Yeah, they, they spend their money somewhere. Indeed. Well, Mark, I think you make an excellent point that, you know, what should it matter if somebody is wealthier than you if your wealth continues to increase over time? As long as you have the ability, if you choose to, to move up the ladder yourself. Which in a you lot of cases you don't. In a lot of cases you don't because of government regulation that actually prevents you right. from Right, that's from what people doing should that. have problems with is all the fiery hoops they have to jump through in order to be rich themselves. But they shouldn't be mad at rich people. I agree with you, but there, you know, human beings tend to be kind of jealous on some things. Envious, and, greedy, yeah. and yeah. they're all slackards. Well, look, because we they, don't want to, they don't want to do the work themselves. We can get back into it here. Ron's on the line in North Carolina listening to Talk Radio 850. Hello, Ron. Hey guys, welcome, sir. Um, I was just um, thinking, uh, listening to you fellas talk here about how uh, um, Bernie Sanders, you know, is um, you know for um, you know more, I guess, secure borders, you know, kind of restricting immigration. How is it? And you know, maybe I'm just totally off base here, but I've always considered myself a libertarian, and um, I may not be like that orthodox libertarian, but it seems to me that you could still be in favor of securing your borders, you know, limiting immigration, but still, you know, embrace the libertarian philosophy. And 
No, you can't. I, I think and you can. No, well, I mean, you can't. Well, what if it's your house or your property? I, I don't want people just trucking through my, my property. You can th- do that because libertarianism is built on the idea of property rights. So but if I-, I want to allow someone to come on my property, you shouldn't be able to tell me I can't do that. You shouldn't be able to put a gun to the, that person's head and say, sorry, turn around. Correct. Uh, you know, As long as they have well, the clearance guess- to get to my property. Yeah, I guess what I'm getting at really is that you know there has to be a lot of people think of libertarians as, you know, like crackpots. And I think if you, you know, push the extreme of the libertarian views, I mean, that can, you know, it's easy to understand how some people can feel that way. Um, I mean, you could still be a, you know, uh, a, a Republican, for example, but be, you know, pro-choice. You know, why is it that, you know, to be a libertarian, at least by your definition and the way you're Ian's talking, definition. you have to... See, okay, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, right. But, so Mark did, and I disagree on on this, and it'll be interesting to see what Conan thinks because it's been a long, long time discussion that we've had on this program. Uh, to me, being a libertarian means something very specific, and if you you know are a libertarian on some issues, that's great. But you to be a libertarian, when I joined the Libertarian Party back in the late 1990s, when I was a teenager, I signed a statement that said I do not support or advocate the initiation of force to achieve political or social goals. To me, that's what being a libertarian is all about. It's not about being for smaller government in general, but supporting big government in some area. So stand by, Ron, because I want to continue the discussion. If you can hang through the news, we will bring you back into hour number two. And I want to get Conan's opinion. What is a libertarian? How do you define this? Can someone who wants to use the violence of the state against peaceful people who are trying to cross some an imaginary line in the sand be considered a libertarian? I say no way. Now, maybe, you know, they can change their mind and become a libertarian. But we'll come back with more on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, I'm Tim Baker. I'm Daniel Brown. And I'm Sean Stewart. And we are the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Us three chumps love to talk too much, and for some reason other people seem to enjoy it. That's why we started You, Me, and BTC, which, which is your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Find our show at youmeandbtc.com every Thursday. We also post Bitcoin-related reviews, opinion articles, and much more. Subscribe, like, and follow at youmeandbtc.com. How fast are Allegra gel caps? It's raking the leaves and loving it fast. How strong are Allegra gel caps? I'm running with my favorite workout partner, Strong. Non-drowsy Allegra gel caps give you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms. It starts working in just one hour, two times faster than Claritin's first dose, and stays strong for 24 hours. It's saying yes to pick up football with the guys, Strong. Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster, nothing's stronger. Among OTC oral antihistamines. Use only as directed. Visit Allegra.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, July 28th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.62 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,095 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $295. 
Antiwar.com reports FBI arrest of terror suspects on extremely flimsy pretext with charges stemming almost entirely from allegations by informants and the provisions by the FBI of fake weapons to the suspects have become something of a running joke. Attempts to prosecute these people are often extremely difficult as the allegations are vague and the evidence to support them is usually non-existent. Cases collapse and the FBI has to roll the dice by charging them with something else, hoping something eventually sticks. Yet officials are defending speedy detentions of people under surveillance, even when there's no real evidence of wrongdoing, insisting that they are surveilling so many people at this point that it's getting kind of unwieldy and that the Islamic State suspects are considered so unpredictable that they just can't afford to wait until those guys actually do something wrong that they can build an actual case around. One top official rejected the idea that not being able to prosecute detainees for lack of evidence was a problem, saying that's the price you have to pay to prevent violence. The arrest first ask questions later strategy is drawing some criticism for being an inefficient way to gather intelligence. Bizarrely, there seems to be a lot of criticism of the obvious corollary that the FBI is in so many cases arresting people on vague suspicions of unspecified wrongdoing and can't prove anything. Prosecutions may be struggling, but it never seems to even dawn on the FBI that the people they are choosing to railroad might in fact not be guilty in the first place. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the Oklahoma State Supreme Court again ordered the removal of a statue of the Ten Commandments from the state capitol grounds after denying an appeal on Monday. The nine justices turned down an appeal from the Oklahoma Capital Preservation Commission to rehear the case less than one month after the court originally ordered for the monument to be taken down. The court said the Oklahoma State Constitution in Article 2, Section 5 bans the use of public property for the benefit of any religious purpose. Even though the Ten Commandments monument was paid for with private funds, the court said it is on public property and benefits or supports a system of religion and is therefore unconstitutional. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt's office on behalf of the commission filed the petition for a rehearing arguing the monument should remain, citing a 2005 case in which the U.S. Supreme Court said the presence of the Ten Commandments on the grounds of the Texas State Capitol did not violate the U.S. Constitution's Establishment Clause. Chief Justice John Reif wrote in Monday's ruling, we carefully consider the arguments of the commission and find no merit warranting a grant of rehearing. In early July, Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon said she would consider a move to rewrite the Oklahoma Constitution to make the monument legally permissible on state grounds. In Survivor Max by Dobby Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon, or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports the U.S. Olympic Committee on Monday rescinded Boston's bid to host the 2024 Olympic Games after the mayor said his city's taxpayers could not afford to host the large-scale event. The move was met with relief by Massachusetts officials who had faced an active opposition campaign that fought the idea of hosting the Summer Games, forecast to cost more than $8.6 billion from the moment the USOC in January picked Boston over other major U.S. cities including Los Angeles, Washington, and San Francisco. Francisco. The USOC said it still hoped to pick a U.S. candidate city to compete for the Games against a lineup including Paris, Rome, Budapest, and Hamburg, Germany. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. During a curt Skype session earlier this afternoon, local Williamsburg resident, 29-year-old Cormac Flanagan, reminded his mother to, quote, try and be more careful after she forgot to pay his cell phone bill. Mom, the phone company called today about my cell phone bill. Oh, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. No, Ma, I'm not mad, but you have to stay on top of these things, you know? I know, you I know. You can't keep waiting until the last minute like this. 
well, I don't want to have to keep reminding you every month. You know, I need my phone. I use it all every every day. I need my phone. I'm constantly using it. I'm so bad. I'm I'm really sorry. I'll get on it. All right. You know, just so you know, you know, this really easy thing you can do. You know, there's this online auto pay. You just deduct from your bank account every month. Yeah. Quite easy. I know. I know. I know. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Just don't let it become a pattern. You know, I know. I know. I know you can do better than this. Okay. I promise. I'll get on it today. Okay. is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Hey, it's Free Talk Live, and you can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We're talking about Bernie Sanders, who really sounds like a right-winger when it comes to immigration. He wants to crack down. It's, I mean, he's not saying that, but he basically is saying that. Uh, in the article with Ezra Klein from Vox, who, where Klein thinks that Sanders, since he calls himself an internationalist, might actually be in favor of more freedom to cross imaginary lines in the sand. However, Sanders quickly cuts him off and corrects him, letting him know that he would, wouldn't dare eliminate the idea of the United States because he loves the nation state. Mm-hmm. By he the loves- way, I looked up internationalism. It, the first, oh, please, thank the you. first Google definition is a movement which advocates a greater economic and political cooperation among nations for the theoretical benefit of all. And so that cooperation could involve allowing people to cross borders. Freely. Right, right. And that would be okay. um, the you know the commodity known as labor. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, we just lost Ron. I was going to bring sure. him back on the line. Uh, well, from, I'd be happy to have the conversation. I do want to have the conversation anyway. Uh, and so we will get to your calls here. But just to answer Ron's question from the last hour, he said, well, he considers himself a libertarian, but he wonders if you can be a libertarian and be against the idea of open borders. And Mark, you say yes. Uh, why do you say yes to that? Because the definition of libertarian seems pretty cut and dry to me. Right. The, you you take the definition of libertarianism as uh, the the oath that you swore when yep. you uh, joined the libert- libertarian party. What was it? Uh, I, I I will not uh, advocate or support the initiation of force to achieve political or social goals. It's a great one. I love it. Um, there's yeah. nothing. It, it's ideologically sound, and I'm for it. However. Um, right, because libertarianism is an ideology. Yeah. Yeah. However, there are um, there's a term called voluntarist that you describe yourself as, right? That's correct. You yep. use the term libertarian and voluntarist to describe yourself. You are a um, you know in the in the you are a greater libertarian, and to a more specifically, you are a libertarian voluntarist because we have a term called voluntarist to describe a certain set of beliefs within libertarianism, which is what would you, how would you describe voluntarism? I would say voluntarism is just another way of putting libertarian because no, the wouldn't. word libertarian— You don't actually believe this. No, that this is what is I believe. This is a run-to because... position for you. No, it's not. Okay. The, the word libertarian has a very specific definition to me. Now, to other yeah. people, it means something else. To, to other people, it means, oh, I'm for smaller government. It means socially conservative, uh, excuse me, socially uh, liberal and fiscally conservative, no, small that's government not what supporter. Liber- libertarian right. means. And not to you. That's but the one term... way people have defined it. Let but me it's define not what a voluntarist is, real quick. A voluntarist is a person who does not believe in the initiation of force for political or social purposes at all, at any point. No, a voluntarist would be someone who believes all human interaction should be consensual. So, uh, so Conan, you know, what do you think about the word libertarian? I always thought the libertarian, the true definition of libertarian, is simply one who follows the non-aggression principle, uh, which I cannot aggress against you, your personal your person or your private property. Could That's you it. hire someone to aggress against me or my private property? You, you could not. That is an indirect. Could you uh, support, even if you weren't hiring them, could you support the use of aggression against someone else's private once property? Once again, it's just an indirect uh, personal aggression right. on your on your own part. So it sounds like you and I agree on what the definition of libertarian, of libertarian is. is. Right. As far as voluntarius is, I think that's just, I always thought voluntarius was a nicer way, a nicer sounding libertarian because everything's getting run through the mud. Right, it you got people does. like uh, Neil Bortz, Glenn Beck, these talk show hosts, uh, Bill Maher. You know, you got all kinds of people who will take the label libertarian for themselves, and that's good to some extent in that it shows that the word libertarian is a desirable label to some people. That, Until Bernie Sanders gets his hands on it, and that you're either so he's running the right wingers, he's calling everyone right wingers now. Yeah. Uh, it, before you know it, give him another couple months, he'll be running the the libertarians through the mud. So um, it's not that I 
it's not that I'm uh, all upset about this or anything. It's just that I think that the term libertarian, as it is used in American culture, um, is probably best described as somebody who doesn't believe in the initiation of the force most of the time. People who are, say um, support the government in the areas of so cops, you support debasing the, the word. Then. I'm it, the, no no. I'm I live in the world that exists, mm. Ian. Yeah. I don't try to remake the world and live in a fantasy. So you're world. the one trying to remake the world. No, you're I the am one not. Who's sir. accepting people like Glenn Beck calling them? a libertarian. No, I will walk around. If you're happy, if, if you want to go ahead and fund it, I'll do a man in the street for you, and we'll go ahead and do a random sampling. Oh, you've and talked ask a lot people, about that. No, I, I asked go you. Ahead. If, uh, we'll ask people what their definition of liberty libertarian is. They don't know what it means. I b- b- fine, Ian. All the, I've done the this world's before, Mark. Stupid. Then I've done this before. I didn't I, say I'm anyone with you, was dude. stupid. The you're world the one is dumb. That. No, sir, I'm not saying that. Yes, Just, you no, are. No, you're saying you're mis- saying they're misdefining no. defining the term because you don't know a word doesn't mean you're dumb. It just means you're uninformed. All right, that's the world's full you, of ignoramuses. It, it, Fine. Depends, it depends on who Parse you ask. Terms if, with me. if you ask a left winger what a libertarian is, they'll say it's a Koch brother right winger. Mm-hmm. If you ask a conservative Republican what a libertarian is, they'll say, "Oh, that's one of them libertines, right? The guys who, you know, the hair like the heroin lady here in the uh, yeah. <laughs> here in New Hampshire are th- just people running around having you know, sex all the time with everyone." I think people would probably have at least an answer now. Maybe so. Maybe it will be as uninformed as what Conan is saying. Or but- they'll say Glenn Beck or Bill Maher. But I have uh, done this outreach, Mark. I've spent hours and hours at outreach booths talking with people back when I was with the Libertarian Party. In... And they don't know what libertarian means. I know. Yeah. Well, they didn't Let me know ask back you this. then. That was I... 10 years ago, though, that was, right? That was 15 years ago. So I, can... I would say that they're probably more likely to give you an answer, even though it'll be a muddled answer and it'll be a confused answer. Previously, 15 years ago, people didn't even know. They had no answer to give. And if they did give an answer, it was wrong. I suspect that more people will give an answer now and ask that question, but will still not really know what it means. My premise is simply this. We have two terms, voluntarist and libertarian. You define them as the same thing. Yeah, I would ask you, what do you define a term as of somebody who is socially um, cons- socially liberal and fiscally conservative who believes in a small government. What's your term for that? A I'd minarchist. Say, yeah, they're a minarchist or they're be maybe leaning in a libertarian direction. Do you direction, think most but... people would know what a minarchist is if you use no, that terminology? Not. Excellent. Nope. Let's just use a bunch of terms people don't know. That's exactly how a language works. Uh, well, we can define terms, Mark. We're on the radio. We can, we talk can about define what terms. Mean. It's fine yeah. with me. We can I'll talk use about what terms. the meanings of words are so people can learn something right. rather than just going along with the muddling of the term libertarian and poisoning it uh, for people out there. Let's go to the phones here. Let's talk to Jeremy. He's in Utah listening to KZNU. Hello, Jeremy. Hey, how are you guys? Welcome, sir. Thank you. I, uh, you the last hour you were talking about um, basically is it is there a point where somebody is too rich? It, it, does it affect my life materially if somebody has much more money than me? And I would say in general, uh, no. It doesn't matter to me how much some, my neighbor has or the guy that lives up on the hill above me has or, or whatever else. The only thing that I would – there's a caveat in there for me, which is if they've gotten their money um, through basically government coercion, so they've uh, – hmm. they're – the CEO of a company, and they've convinced a politician to create a, create laws that, that favor them at the expense of their competition. Then I would say at that point, they have too much money that is ill-gotten money. That's a good point. Um, I'll I, give you that I, one. I don't, I don't begrudge anybody any money that they earn for themselves through their own diligence, hard work, whatever. Uh, but when they get uh, their government friends in on passing laws that make it more difficult for their competition that point they've got too much money that isn't there. Yeah, we often say on the show there are three types of rich people. The people who inherit their money, um, which nobody seems to have, uh, nobody seems to, they don't hate them or anything like that. They just don't have much respect for those type of people. The people that uh, earn their money in the marketplace, providing goods or services that other people are willingly exchanging money for. And and people seem to want to lump those in with this third group that you've defined, those that have used relationships with politicians and bureaucrats to stuff to line their pockets, who, who have used coercion, as we described it here on the show um, to to aggrandize themselves and those aren't the same groups at all one group is helping humanity the other group is using the power of force and violence to to enrich themselves. but doesn't that second group if they're really doing a good job at what they're doing don't they usually become the third group by you know if they're good businessmen 
And there's that's an outlet right there. That's a money making outlet. If you're gonna if it if it costs this much to actually create a new product, and I can spend this much to send a lobbyist to D.C. You know, a lot of well, times it's I mean, the same. We see that happen, Conan, but it's certainly not every successful yeah. businessman who gets into lobbying politicians. Some of them are just, you know, they're more interested in focusing on their business than focusing on Washington, D.C. or Tallahassee or whatever state capital uh, and the politicians there. Jeremy, great point tonight, man. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Toll free Jeremy number wins. Uh, Toll free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, that's 855-450-3733. Do you take Mark's side on the debasing of the term libertarian? Are you embracing that, muddling the waters? Or should it may mean something? Should it mean something specific? You can be libertarian on one issue. That's I can see that as being the case. It's Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. As if chlorine in our water weren't bad enough, now they're adding ammonia? It's true. Some municipalities are now adding ammonia plus chlorine to your water supply. It's a disinfectant called chloramine. But with a trusted Big Berkey water filter, you can keep chloramine out of your water. New NSF EPA certified lab tests show EPA Berkey water filters remove chloramines, pharmaceuticals, BPA, pesticides, bacteria and viruses, all forms of fluoride, and much more. Big Berkey water filters are the original and most trusted on the market. The gold standard in water purification. And our filters last for years at less than two cents per gallon. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get your Big Berkey today. Call 1-877-99-BERKEY or click BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to to do though is to put their money where their mouth is it's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 reasons liberty lives in new hampshire a documentary by free state project early movers watch it free at 101 reasonsfilm.com 101 reasonsfilm.com LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. 
You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here toll-free. The meaning of libertarian. It's once again come up as a show topic. It's been a little while since we've hit this one. 855-450 free if you want to join us here. Maybe you take Mark's side, which is to debase the word and make it some sort of generic statement about being for smaller government. Or maybe you take Conan and uh, my position here and that it actually means adhering to the non-aggression principle, not advocating for the initiation of force, or aggression to achieve political or social goals in life. Trying to come up with more creative ways to achieve goals rather than using the violence of the state. So the original question that had spurred this conversation was about the issue of immigration. I want to come back to that uh, in a moment. But first, if you're online, whether it's your smartphone, your laptop, your desktop computer, you need to protect yourself. You've got to take the responsibility for this. Your internet service provider is probably one of the groups that's violating your privacy. They're likely tracking all the websites that you visit, the search terms that you're entering. They're probably keeping logs of all that information for several years in some cases. So whoa, who are they going to sell that information to, turn it over to? You don't know. That's up to them. But what you can do to stop it is get ProXPN. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Grab their software for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux. Get connected, and then there's no prying and spying on your connection from that point forward. Because ProXPN encrypts your data connection. And you can get it at a sweet discount. 50% off of the regular monthly price when you buy the annual account with code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live. And 50, as in 50% off, breaks the price down to around $5 per month. And that is good for the lifetime of your account. So when you're ready to renew, you get the same awesome deal. The premium account gets you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. ProXPN also doesn't keep records of your online habits. And you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So there's really nothing to lose here except your privacy. So why wait? Go and get protected over at ProXPN.com slash FTL. And don't forget promo code FTL50. Get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. That, again, is proxpn.com slash FTL. So uh, the question was on the issue of immigration because we were actually talking about Bernie Sanders, who was apparently a closed borders guy. There's a little bit more to say about Bernie here in a moment. But it spurred a call from, I think it was Ron in North Carolina, who was asking, well, you know, I feel like I'm a libertarian, but not on, you know, on this issue. I, I feel like we're not in agreement because we're pretty clearly open borders guys here on this radio program. I we, am, yeah. We yes. believe in freedom to cross these arbitrary boundaries. So I've got as- caveats on that. Um, I'm not uh, of the opinion that people should be able to cross borders, um, whatever they want, and then go and get taken care of by some kind of welfare system or whatever. Okay, so uh, you're against gov- welfare. Uh, against, uh, you know, whatever government force might go to funding yep. uh, people's lives, I believe that people should go be able to go where they want and earn a living if that's what they want to do. That's what i believe yeah so uh, so what you're saying is you're in favor of open borders as long as there's no government welfare program around well um i think that uh, i think what we need to do is, is that uh, we need to acknowledge that the state creates problems yeah. and we need to stop advocating for uses of force in all areas i advocate for um you know to, to stop using force in in all areas and i think that there will be some bumps on the road because we have used force up to this point i have not well, you mean the government? I'm talking about we, human beings. The vast oh. majority of human beings well, advocate— Not everybody uses force. The vast majority of human beings advocate for the use of force against their neighbors because they, they do not understand the ideas of voluntarism. Correct. They do not understand. They think that welfare is good, of course, but mm-hmm. they don't—they just can't open their eyes to the idea that you, what's really happening is someone is holding a gun to someone's head— taking money out of their pocket in order to help people who need to be helped. So, I mean, it's a good thing. Well, usually the gun doesn't you know? come out, Conan. Usually the gun's sort of behind the scenes, and it's uh, but threatening letters. they use a letters. gun if necessary. Yes, they will come to the gun if they need it, but well, usually yeah, first, a threatening first letter. They, yeah, first work. it's the letter, and yeah. then it's your house, and then it's your, you know. Usually the threatening letter is sufficient, though, because people know ultimately that there's a jail cell or a gun that will come to them eventually if I they don't. I think a prime example of this it. that is the uh, these the old people in I think it was Indiana the the uh, is it Ukra 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 players they, it's a card uh, game oh Ukra. 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 yeah it is just, a funny word just last week and <laughs> Ukra. Uh, well no of course they were gambling because yeah. there was prizes involved 
And of course, the gaming commission came down and says, hey, you guys can't do that. You need to stop what you're doing immediately. And they did. And they stopped immediately. And then, of course, a couple of days later, the governor and the gaming commission both came out and says, hey, you know what? We would have never done anything. We would have never. Really? Yeah. After, I didn't see the follow up on that. After this old person's home. Mm-hmm. stopped what they were doing, and a number of others as well. So, I mean, they made their point. They got them to stop, and now they're going to try to get it fixed through legislation, oh, which might be 10 years from now. And, of course, they'll all be dead. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the frat ho- fraternities, and I think it was fraternities and maybe uh, uh, VA veterans uh, were able to uh, gamble all of their money away at these events because it's legal, mm-hmm. whereas everyone else is, has, they have to jump through the fire hoops, and they have to get a license to gamble in these homes sick so yeah i mean it's a prime example they were never going to do anything but that letter came they did something they the, went and they threatened those yeah folks. the letter came and also an application to get their gambling license came mm-hmm. in the mail so um i mean i'm happy to talk about sort of how i moved from the position of believing that we needed border uh security to the position where we don't yeah I, that was something i did as well i mean when i actually signed up for the free state project or not the free state project the uh, libertarian party i signed that statement saying I didn't support or advocate the initiation of force to achieve political or social goals. And I knew that I didn't really understand, understood, or I did not understand at that time how that really applied on everything, but I knew I needed to understand because I signed that statement, that it meant something to me that I signed that. And uh, and that's when I came to learn more about immigration because that was actually my issue when I um, that I didn't really necessarily get about you know freedom how does this work here right so there's a learning curve on this particular issue at least there was for me and until you can come to the agreement that force should not be used on peaceful people trying to cross the border you're not a libertarian on that issue maybe you're libertarian on ending the war on drugs maybe you're libertarian on taxes maybe you're libertarian on a bunch of other things yeah i mean the say i mean that, there's a saying everyone everyone is libertarian on something yeah, that, I'll give you that, absolutely. You and can. I'm willing to agree with you that uh, if if you don't hold the open borders position, you're not libertarian on that issue. However, okay, good. I, I'm we're of on the, the same opinion. Page. No, we're not. Uh, okay. Because <laughs> I am <laughs> I am of the opinion you may not, you can't exclude somebody from the term simply because they are not 100%. So and also, wait a second, I'm can, not done. Wait uh-huh. a second. Um, and the simple fact that you learned a definition somewhere and you've decided that that's the definition does not make that the definition. Oh, yeah, it does. You're claiming, no, you're not. No, yeah, the it doesn't. people who found you're the claiming, Libertarian Party were involved. Let me read with, from the Libertarian Party's uh, quote right here, okay, mister. Sure. It says, Libertarians support the maximum liberty in both personal and economic matters. They advocate as much, a much smaller government, one that is limited to protecting individuals from coercion and violence. Libertarians tend to embrace individual responsibility, oppose government bureaucracy and taxes, promote private charity, and tolerate diverse lifestyles, support the free market, and defend civil liberties. What's that, that from? Where are you reading that from? Yeah, I'll just go ahead and give you Wikipedia's uh, quotes here. I thought you said it was uh, the Libertarian Party. It is from their uh, well, the they've Libertarian watered down their Party platform. 2010 platform. They've watered it down. It's and, been taken over and by... And taken again from Libertarian... Uh, from Watts, yeah. Duncan, it's 2008. Been ta- it's been taken over, Mark. The Libertarian Party's been infiltrated by a bunch I, of conservatives. I'm not claiming that that's not true, but yeah. that doesn't get, you don't get and to decide Brothers. that's the definition of liber- liberty. I didn't decide the it. It was the people who founded came before the before the term the Libertarian Party, so they don't that's get to right. decide. That's right, and the people who founded the Libertarian Party were some of the original Libertarians who absolutely did decide what the word Libertarian meant. They're the founders of that party, and ever since then, it's been debased by people like you who get in there and they're like, well, it right, needs to be a big tent. Fault. We need to allow conservatives and liberals in here too it's free talk live there's more coming up <laughs> we, we, we are a survival company we manufacture our own line of level three and level three a body armor we proudly make our armor 100 percent in america we have the best prices in the nation about 125 dollars cheaper than our nearest competitor all lab certified for thou art my rock in my fortress psalm 31 3 We are Fortress Survival, LLC.com. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. 
Never, ever send a follow-up email asking, did you get my email? Email 101, if it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. This is the first time I've heard your program. I'm, t I'm hearing this person talk about what a wonderful thing it would be if we had legal drugs. Yes, I don't know Andy. where you're getting your information from. I think you've lost your mind. I'm telling you. I'm, oh, you don't want to hear. You no, don't no, want to no, hear I reality. Hear, I want to hear everything you, you want to say. You don't want to hear reality. Okay, Please, well then. Knock me over with reality, like Sandy. Like a 12-year-old, you know. I'm telling you what about the war on drugs. <laughs> if you see people on drugs, you might change your mind. Man, look, no, what, my wife. No. My my wife He's works in a drug treatment center, lady. Oh, good for her. There you go. Good for her. Sandy, okay. I've smoked copious amounts of marijuana. I, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that a bit. That's probably what's wrong with your brain. I've been around plenty of people that have taken you drugs, Sandy. You got a fact Sandy. for me, uh, Sandy? One of them? Fact? I don't have statistics. Sandy, we're yeah. not asking people to smoke marijuana. We're just saying let's not make it illegal. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Back now with more Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number is 855-453. Talking about the definition of a libertarian. Conan and I are on the side of the strict definition of the word. Uh, Conan, you're pointing at well, me. Well, no, I'm changing my mind. Really? You've been persuaded by the man in the silly hat? I'm persuaded by, no, I'm persuaded by the idea that these terms, these ideologies, the, uh, the original meaning do evolve over time. Like, for example, uh, one, once upon a time, we could all have considered ourselves as liberals. Classical liberals, sure. Well, just liberals, and then, yeah, of course, classical liberals, and that has gone right out the window. Now that's true. You, you got the, the progressives who consider themselves the, the liberals of the world, and that's a bunch of crap, because what does that mean? So, yeah, libertarianism, I'm sorry. So you're uh, accepting this now, the idea yeah, that— Yeah, my um, God, Conan, are you taking facts on and changing your opinion? You'll never, never be able to take over Ian's seat if you do that. <laughs> I like the, uh, like the non-aggression principle being— uh, associated with voluntarism, I think that's the okay. uh, I think that's the best term. I think that it, right now it's the safest term, and people it it sounds good. It hasn't been run through the mud yet. Um, I get you. Libertarians are basically minarchists. They believe in small government. They're basically classical liberals. They believe courts, uh, maybe schools, uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, military, and that's you know that's it. No well, more cops, courts, roads. Um, uh, the uh, right a police state. So you can be a libertarian and support a police state. 
No, you would in your mind. You would support a smaller use of police, oh. but you just not believe that um, and be skeptical of big government. But the last guy said he uh, that was on the phone said that he thinks he's a libertarian and he's not for uh, open borders. So Excellent. That, Let's that talk re- about require borders. a police state. No, you can talk about that in a moment. I'd rather go to the phones and talk to John in Minnesota, listening to WNMT. Hey, John. Yeah, hi. I was just wondering, what do you do when you're a libertarian? But your neighbor is not. What do you mean by that? Well, it depends on what the situation is. I mean, uh, you probably well, should just ignore them if it's just as that situation. Okay, let me, what brings it up is, is back in the day when I was in school, in a psychology class, they did a study. And they put a camera in a waiting room, and they had a plate, and they had two cookies on it. They had a big cookie, and they had a little cookie. And then they had a sign said, take one. Mm-hmm. And everyone who came took the big cookie. Okay. And that means what? Well, what happened, uh, with, the, what think, happened with the room with the camera on it? So they took the smaller turkey, right? That, I think we're dealing here with human nature, that everyone wants to take the bigger cookie. So even if you're a libertarian, it doesn't mean that your neighbors are going to go along with you. Well, that, yeah, well, yeah, because humans are just inherently greedy. It's just something that's just a you can't get rid of. Right. Yeah, but right. most people aren't willing it's, to use violence against their neighbor directly. They're not willing to threaten you with violence. They are more likely to be friendly uh, with their neighbors than anything else. Right. So, what this uh, experiment doesn't take into consideration is that the people that are most likely to take the big cookie, the ones that um, are willing to use. Uh, not just subterfuge or uh, assume that it's okay. They were told or to whatever. take a cookie. Right, they were told to take a cookie. But the people who are will take the, who want that cookie the most are most likely to get into government and use the force of violence to get it. Right, like it, the government is the place where the most successful uh, gang members and thieves would go. You're really mixing our metaphors here, and it's not making much sense. Uh, John, look, people are going to take the big cookie because they were told they could take a cookie, right? So which one, if you like cookies, which one are you going to take, the big one or the small one? I don't think there's, you know, this is even directly related to how neighbors get along with one another. Well, 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 the question is how many people took the small cookie or didn't take a cookie at all? He said none of them. They all took the bigger cookie. Well, I'm, right. I'm sure that at least one person out there was— on a diet, someone, right? Someone yeah. had diabetes and you're like, I can't eat sugar or— That's probably true. Or— you know, or their friend was with them. He's like, you had the big cookie. I'll but have the small one. This has nothing to do with how neighbors interact with one another. Most people interact with one another on a peaceful basis. They're more likely to be friendly with each other because that's the best way for humans to get along. And there are consequences. If you are a crap hole to your neighbor, it's going to come back. It's going to steamroll down. Absolutely. So if you, I don't kick your neighbor's cat... Well, that's the end of it. Or if I was to say, tell my neighbor that I didn't like his American flag that he has, his little uh, memorial back in the back of his house, well, that, that's going to be a problem. He's not going to uh, probably ever want to listen to me again. Yeah, it'll, uh, it'll lead to more escalation of conflict if you're not friendly with folks. And generally, using the government to get your way is not being friendly with people. And it's certainly true that people are willing to use the government to get their way over others. But that's just simply because they don't realize what's going on. Lots of people are in favor of the state, they're in favor of the government and the status quo because they don't know of a better way. They don't feel like they themselves support violence. Well, it's the tool, government, which which is a a tool to control other human beings, doesn't have that amoral feel to it. Sure, it's legitimate. If people people really sat down and thought about the fact of the gun to to your neighbor's head, uh, they would realize, hey, this whole idea is immoral. This is not something I would ever do in person. Right. I would never walk across the street and point a gun at my neighbor and say, hey, look, uh, I'm sorry. I couldn't make rent this this month. Uh, I'm going to need $50, $100 exactly. from you. Because, and, and hey, and it's for a good cause because if you don't give me the $100, my kids are going to starve. I mean, 99% well, of people would never do something like no, that. No, they would not. 99.9% of people. The sociopaths one, out there might do it. Right. I don't think we're being entirely clear here. So um, there's nothing wrong with government because humans need uh, their behavior governed. So, for instance, if somebody comes onto your property and does something violent, they're going to need to be governed by you or some agency mm-hmm. you hire to do that. If you want to call that agency a government, that's fine. Um, however, what really is the issue is the funding model that the state takes. The state claims to be claims a monopoly and then claims you need to pay them for that monopoly. So coercive government is the so, pro- the proper Yeah. John, uh you wouldn't go and threaten your your neighbors, would you? 
No, absolutely not. But there's some people who are not, let's say, wholly adequate. What does that mean? They're not wholly adequate. Well, what I mean is that some people have a different set of values than others. Yeah, that's absolutely true. What does that have to do with anything? And, well, uh, wait, well, some well, people are not going to ever uh, follow the non-aggression principle. That's fine. That's They're, why they have guns. They, that's why they have guns. <laughs> that's why you can defend yourself. Well, Bernie Sanders doesn't want us to have guns unless it's Obviously. to hunt. So how do we ever defend ourselves unless we spend money to pay I'm for I'm not cops worried about to... Bernie Sanders. I mean, the, the New Hampshire isn't going to get rid of its guns. But that's where the caller is going. It's like, how do you how do you deal with the the, uh, the crazies out there who are never going to follow the law? Well, you shoot them if you have to. I mean, if they're threatening you and your family, then, uh, then you know, if it comes down I to it, I think we live in times defense. where that really, people can't stomach that kind of, uh, even though we watch it, even though that's it's mm-hmm. we are inundated with it in our, our, uh, our media, People really can't uh, shoot another human being. It's, well, it doesn't make any sense to them. Why would you ever do that, Ian? Well, they will if, if their lives fr- are threatened. If your kids are being threatened or your wife is being raped or something like that, then all of a sudden I bet you'd find it within yourself to do something. If not use a gun, use some sort of I think most people would rather tactic. hire another person to do that for them, and that's well, where it all— Here's that's a little where news the cops, for you. That's where the cops and the military all boil down is the, uh, the whole idea that people can't do this themselves. Here's the uh, news for you. The cops is n- are not a protection organization. They are an organization that comes and cleans up a mess after a crime. Um, they then charge people that happen to be around, or they attempt to find the people if they're not around, but they are not there to protect you. They are there to clean up the mess. Hey, John, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Let's talk to H. Rudin in Florida. H., you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, the reason I called is um, regarding the definition of libertarian. Uh, David Nolan, who was the founder of the Libertarian Party, had a definition which included five things. He said that if someone believed these five things, they were a libertarian. And one was that a person owns their self, that you own your body, you can decide what goes into your own body. Another one was you must believe in self-defense, which includes the right to own a firearm. Another one is you, you must believe that there should be no criminal possession laws, that there should be no law against simply owning something. Also, he said that you must believe that there should be no taxes on productivity, so no income tax. And then you also must believe in a sound money system, that money must be backed by something of value. Not that like seems like a more political definition than anything else, but it's they're all pretty good. If you want to stand by H. Rudin, you can comment further. Our toll-free number is 855-453. More on Bernie Sanders, who's definitely not a libertarian. Coming up. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Now a twice as nice twin kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals twin kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95. But now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the twin kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. 
Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Back now to more Free Talk Live. We've got time for you if you want to join us here. Plenty of time, actually. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. Immigration, defining libertarian. These are some of the things we've discussed here tonight. Oh, yeah, and Mike Tyson is getting into the Bitcoin ATM business. That's the first story we brought up. <laughs> With you tonight, it's Ian. It's Conan. And King Mark the First. Hey, I want to tell you how to get 25% off pretty much anything you buy on Amazon. You have to have Bitcoin. Okay, but Amazon doesn't take Bitcoin, and they certainly aren't going to just give you 25% off for using Bitcoin. So here's the secret. You go to purse.freetalklive.com. Get signed up. Even if you don't even have Bitcoin yet, if you want to do this, just go and get started at purse.freetalklive.com. There's an easy video that you can watch there that explains how this works. Slight learning curve. You have to learn how to go to uh, Amazon and use your wish list if you've never done this before. Okay, So you then add your item that you want to your Amazon wish list. Then you go to purse.freetalklive.com. They will ingest your wish list into their system, and then you get to select what discount you want. You want to get 20% off? No problem. You want to get 25% off? You could do that. I got 29% off the headphones I'm wearing right now. Let me ask you this. Um, so people have asked questions about Amazon Prime membership. Some of them are Prime members. And uh, yeah. does how does Purse work with your Prime membership? It does nothing for you as far as your membership is concerned. It only has to do with the person buying the product for you. So what happens is you put your order onto a marketplace on Purse, and then somebody who wants to buy Bitcoin, the Bitcoin you're going to get rid of, uh, the person who's buying the Bitcoin says, oh, I'd like to get this amount of Bitcoin, and I'm willing to pay this price above, you know, tw let's, say tw let's say you pick 20% as your discount on mm -hmm. Amazon. Well, that person's paying 20% on top of the price of Bitcoin to buy your Bitcoin. Okay, so that person... But they pay for the shipping 20% off with the shipping too, right? And the Amazon Prime member doesn't pay for the shipping. That's correct, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, the Amazon Prime member would be able to ship you something faster than somebody who is not an Amazon Prime member. Um, but you don't get to pick who your buyer is. Okay. So if you're in a rush to get something, then you should be using Purse Instant and just get your 5% off and, and be done with it. Uh, but if you aren't in a rush and you're willing to be patient, then you can save 20, 25, maybe even more percentage off uh, whichever Amazon product you want. So my point is you don't get to say this can only ship with with Prime. Unless they've, I know they just redesigned the site. I got an email from them today, and I actually haven't logged in yet to see the new redesign. So just, maybe okay. they'll add something like that in the future, Mark. So here's know. my question. Let's say you're buying a $15 item, uh -huh. and, it has a $5, and it has $5 shipping. 
um, if you were an Amazon Prime member, you could buy that $15 item and not pay the $5 shipping. Yeah, that's right. If you go on to, uh, you've put it on purse, it puts it on at $20 uh, dollars because it's $15. I don't think it would. And, no? I, I don't okay. think. That's a good question, Mark. I'm not really sure about how that works. I would say that it would likely be the buyer who would have to cover the shipping costs okay. on that. So I was not clear. Yeah, I just wasn't clear. That's how speculation that on my part. I've not really taken a close you look at that. You are a Prime member and you are um, selling, you know, selling these things. So it seemed like it would be, um, you know, pretty easy for answer question for you to answer. Well, no, whether you're a Prime member or not doesn't matter when it comes okay. to purse. It's the buyer is what they are, is yeah. what matters. I'll have to look into it, Mark. I don't know. That's a good question, and that, that would probably be a better question for uh, the folks from Purse, and maybe we can get an actual official answer on that rather than asking me to speculate. Uh, so, toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. Let's go to H. Rudin. He was giving us his definition as according to the founder of the Libertarian Party as to what a libertarian is. You were going over five points H. Rudin. They were all sort of political, like that you needed to support uh, self-defense in order to be a libertarian. I happen well, I, to disagree. I like, I like number one, own yourself. I mean, That's was, a good that one. That's great. That's a pretty solid libertarian point. But I think you well, could be well, a pacifist these, and also be a libertarian. These are not my definitions per se. This, I'm just telling you what David Nolan— Right, um, the founder of the Libertarian Party. I mean, somebody who was he, involved. For example, he, for example, uh, one of them was no tax on productivity— but he didn't mention the other taxes. So by that definition, a person who is a Georgist could probably be a, a libertarian under his definition. A Georgist is somebody who believes some, uh, basically who believes in the ideas in of liberty, people. except that land can't be owned. Right. Well, wouldn't somebody, if, I mean, if, if David, uh, whatever his name was, was saying, Nolan. Nolan, if he was saying that you could you could support other kind of taxes as being a libertarian? Yeah. That doesn't seem right. Well, how do you, how do you define tax? productivity? Because, I mean, kind of, if I spent a, if I spent thirty years paying for a piece of property, that kind of is my product. So I mean, does that count, or is or am I just uh, you know? What about tariffs? Am, am I really bending? Yeah, exactly. Am I really bending the 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 property uh, rights rule? Yeah, this not a, this is not a comprehensive list, and again, this is not my my list. I mean, personally, I'm against all taxation, but I'm just saying that's how no one defined it. Interesting. And he wrote that back in the uh, 1970s, early 70s, when the— Well, I don't know when he when, when he wrote it. He did write it at some point in his lifetime, but mm -hmm. I don't know when that was. Okay. But well, he, said that, he said that those were five things that a person must support in order to be uh, considered a libertarian— in his opinion. It, by, by him. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, right. it doesn't require that when you join the Libertarian Party that you agree to all of those bullet points. It just boils it down to a principle because the, the Libertarian Party, which isn't the whole Libertarian movement, that's just the political wing of the Libertarian movement, but the party used to call itself, and I think still does, the party of principle. And that's because libertarianism can be boiled down to, as Conan put it earlier, the non-aggression principle, the idea that it's inappropriate and unacceptable to uh, to use aggression, to use the initiation of force against somebody who has not harmed uh, another person. And that's that's the principle that's at the core of libertarianism. And you could, from that principle, derive some of the things that you're talking about, but not necessarily all of them. I mean, although the three of us in the studio agree with the idea of self-defense, I think you can absolutely be a pacifist and be a libertarian, because by definition, a pacifist is someone who will not defend themselves or others. Uh, but that doesn't mean self-defense. In this case, he was just saying that one basically believes in the right of other people to defend themselves. That's even not if what I heard H. Rudin say. Well, I think that's what what he was that what Nolan was saying was uh, you have to believe. I mean, I, I would say that the way I interpret it was that I suppose one could be a pacifist as long as they didn't want to infringe upon others' rights to self-defense. Well, yeah, I can't imagine a pacifist would force themselves, would, would force their belief of pacifism on other people. I, I'm they don't. I am sure that there yeah. are pacifists out there like that, vegans and feminists, and they consider themselves Hold pacifists what? who would do just that. They would insist— Force pacifism on people? Oh, Essentially yeah. take people's right away 
to defend themselves, not force. But they would be them. using violence against those. Well, people. they don't. Was, they don't. What the hell are you that? talking about? People don't. People don't for a second stop to think about their beliefs. They're just like guns are bad. I hate them. They make uh, me okay. cry. Well, Look then at you're the not dead a people. Okay. Exactly. I understand That's, that. Right. We yeah, we know that, but they don't. Hey, thanks, uh, H. Rudin. I appreciate the call tonight. Lucas is in North Carolina listening to Talk Radio 850. Hello, Lucas. Hi. Well, I just wanted to throw a couple of things out there uh, real quick. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, the first progressive, he was a Republican. Of course, Republicans were the liberal party back then, Mm. and Democrats were the conservative party, the the party that started our country. Uh, If you want to talk about... um, Hold on. Uh, Washington wasn't. Uh, uh, Washington didn't have a party. A couple of things, and you can say whatever you want. You well, say whatever I don't think the Democrats want. started the country. So this isn't the main thing I'm calling about. I'm not saying the. I'm saying the people who started our country, when, when the Republican Party got started, it was in reaction to another group of people. Republicans were reacting to people who referred to themselves as believers in democracy, like Thomas Jefferson. So I don't want to get into a deep thing about this. I'm just pointing out something amusing. Progressivism was started by Teddy Roosevelt, who was a Republican. Uh, pacifism, for example, Gandhi. Gandhi did use nonviolent resistance to push his viewpoint on the British. That's what they did. They didn't do it violently. They did it without violence. Uh, now, earlier you all mentioned non-aggression, and this is the main reason I'm calling. Uh, the idea that, well, of course nobody's going to think it's okay to go to your neighbor and put a gun to his head. But m- almost every bit of writing in the literature about uh, libertarianism that's analyzed in depth addresses the question of aggression from a much broader viewpoint. So, for example, if my neighbor burns leaves in his yard and some of those leaves blow into my yard and start a fire, it's that's pollution. aggression against me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely if my neighbor is. walks over to my house and, I don't know, take some of the vegetables from my garden. Or if we have a pond that's adjacent to both of our houses and my neighbor dumps his auto oil in there, but my kids like swimming in there. Yeah, that's, that's all of those are examples of aggression. You're correct. Right. And by that token, by the same token, for example, if my neighbor builds a factory on his property and that emits smoke or other pollutants that then move through my property, that's a form of aggression. Yep. How do you I'd, I'd agree with you. That? I think it's um, well. I think to some extent, what you're talking about there is an issue of quantity. So, for instance, your neighbor um, emits a pollution called carbon dioxide. Um, it is. A, no, no, I'm talking about real pollution. I under, like, well, hold. Like, what is like, real pollution? When does real dioxide. pollution start? Because what? I can tell you that if your neighbor has a carbon dioxide producing machine that throws out tons and tons of carbon dioxide, somebody's going to call that pollution. We'll come back with it. Uh, I'd like to discuss this further with Lucas if he wants to hang on. Our number is 855-450-FREE. You can also reach us on Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. There's more Free Talk Live coming up. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. This is Shaquille O'Neal. And the Shaquettes. Reminding you that anytime, anytime is a good time. Good time. For the cooling, drying, fresh scent of Gold Bond powder spray. Like after the gym. Or a crowded or golf. Or working with farm animals. Or a hard day's work. Like sports casting? You said it, ladies. Stay cool with Gold Bond Powder Spray. Stay cool with Gold Bond. <laughs> this is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Tuesday, gold is up $4 at $1,098 per ounce, and silver is up $0.13 cents at $14.75 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at 293 U.S. dollars. Roberts & Roberts Brokerage is your trusted physical precious metals broker. Whether you're buying or selling, give us a call at 800-874-9760. And for more information, visit us online at rrbi.co.
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, July 28th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.62 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,095 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $295. Antiwar.com reports, FBI arrest of terror suspects on extremely flimsy pretext with charges stemming almost entirely from allegations by informants and the provisions by the FBI of fake weapons to the suspects have become something of a running joke. Attempts to prosecute these people are often extremely difficult as the allegations are vague and the evidence to support them is usually non-existent. Cases collapse and the FBI has to roll the dice by charging them with something else, hoping something eventually sticks. Yet officials are defending speedy detentions of people under surveillance even when there's no real evidence of wrongdoing, insisting that they are surveilling so many people at this point that it's getting kind of unwieldy and that the Islamic State suspects are considered so unpredictable that they just can't afford to wait until those guys actually do something wrong that they can build an actual case around. One top official rejected the idea that not being able to prosecute detainees for lack of evidence was a problem, saying that's the price you have to pay to prevent violence. The arrest first, ask questions later strategy is drawing some criticism for being an inefficient way to gather intelligence. Bizarrely, there seems to be a lot of criticism of the obvious corollary that the FBI is in so many cases arresting people on vague suspicions of unspecified wrongdoing and can't prove anything. Prosecutions may be struggling, but it never seems to even dawn on the FBI that the people they are choosing to railroad might in fact not be guilty in the first place. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the Oklahoma State Supreme Court again ordered the removal of a statue of the Ten Commandments from the state capitol grounds after denying an appeal on Monday. The nine justices turned down an appeal from the Oklahoma Capital Preservation Commission to rehear the case less than one month after the court originally ordered for the monument to be taken down. The court said the Oklahoma State Constitution in Article 2, Section 5 bans the use of public property for the benefit of any religious purpose. Even though the Ten Commandments monument was paid for with private funds, the court said it is on public property and benefits or supports a system of religion and is therefore unconstitutional. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt's office on behalf of the commission filed the petition for a rehearing arguing the monument should remain, citing a 2005 case in which the U.S. Supreme Court said the presence of the Ten Commandments on the grounds of the Texas State Capitol did not violate the U.S. Constitution's Establishment Clause. Chief Justice John Reif wrote in Monday's ruling, we carefully Carefully consider the arguments of the commission and find no merit warranting a grant of rehearing. In early July, Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon said she would consider a move to rewrite the Oklahoma Constitution to make the monument legally permissible on state grounds. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. 
Reuters reports the U.S. Olympic Committee on Monday rescinded Boston's bid to host the 2024 Olympic Games after the mayor said his city's taxpayers could not afford to host the large-scale event. The move was met with relief by Massachusetts officials who had faced an active opposition campaign that fought the idea of hosting the Summer Games, forecast to cost more than $8.6 billion from the moment the USOC in January picked Boston over other major U.S. cities including Los Angeles, Washington, and San Francisco. Francisco. The USOC said it still hoped to pick a U.S. candidate city to compete for the Games against a lineup including Paris, Rome, Budapest, and Hamburg, Germany. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. With job numbers near historic lows, Forbes magazine has released a list of tips for finding a job, all of which involve witnessing an employer murder someone. Forbes says despite the grim economy, employers are still hungry for talented workers who know how important it is to forget about whatever they think they saw or heard. So uh, me and a couple of friends were out smoking at the viaduct the other day, and uh, we saw this really rich guy in a Mercedes pull up in his car and drop a uh, nothing. Now I'm the Vice President of International Development. According to Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein, we had a great quarter and hired hundreds of new employees. I haven't done anything wrong and all my employees will tell you the same thing because that's the deal we had. But the article warns that stumbling onto a coke fueled CEO strangling a prostitute isn't a foolproof method for finding work because employers are just as likely to murder you as they are to hire you. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free, Free Talk, Talk Live. Live. Oh, yeah. Hey there. Uh, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Forgot about the uh, the new music bed. He's got, he's got Zeus in there. I forgot he was there for a moment. Yeah, I noticed that this show after I complained about it a couple of episodes ago. and You I, complained about the music? I did not like that newsy crap. <laughs> I mean, that was really, I don't know, it... it it brought it brought me down. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So now yeah. this good this is stuff is better. it's not the original. It's not. I think you had some you know even some Romstein in there, didn't you? Or- no, the original music uh, for the show, which we had for more than a decade, included Grip Inc, Megadeth, Metallica, or no, Metallica hasn't been on for a long time. Megadeth, Grip Inc, and Testament. Those were the three staples, and there were a few others in there. A little Ministry, uh, a couple more. Are these freebie sounds, or are these actual? This is Rebel Inc. Uh, this is a, Ooh, a okay. libertarian commissioned by us, right? I did talk to them about this. Yeah, yeah. so they're totally fine uh, with us using their product, and so therefore no issues with copyright. It has that same we'll feel yeah, of the originals. Um, it also sticks. yeah, they get a lot of high energy tunes. Yep. It also um, the you know there's the the consultant that wanted us to uh, sort of get rid of the originals. Um, didn't have, I guess his biggest problem was with the extros, not the intros, right? I would call them outros, but... Okay, uh, intros, outros, pardon me. Yeah. Well, he wanted us to not have any music whatsoever. That's true, but that's not possible on Free Talk Live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's just not possible based on the way the, the show is sort of uh, designed. Anyway, glad you like it, Conan. Obviously, you know, these musical changes, some people like them one way, others like them the other way. And Whoa, has somebody complained whatever. about the um, heavy metal coming back? Uh, well, no, not necessarily, but there were people who said when the heavy metal left the first time that they never liked the heavy metal, right? So those yeah. are pe- there were people. There are people who don't like heavy metal, and then there are people who do. And you should get some classical violinists, or, you know, some Mozart. Yeah, but then That's people complain about life. that. Exactly. So anyway, the the original reason we moved to the newsy style beds is because we wanted the uh, the the music to be unremarkable generally at least that was the idea of the this fancy consultant uh that we'd hired and i don't take everything consultants say and implement it on free talk live i take the stuff that makes sense and some of the points he made made sense because well it had been a pain in the butt sometimes to uh when when soundcloud when you upload the sound to soundcloud if you run too many seconds of the actual track uh so like mark's nights when he would just wait and wait and wait and then finally (laughs) open the mic up and start talking because he's usually not paying attention to what's going on around him uh on almost every mark show that i uploaded it'd get flagged later on as a violation of copyright (laughs) you guys because if you start talking over top of the song the little auto check thing doesn't Uh recognize the the yeah, every every show i upload on my program is it's it's in the same boat i you know i have to worry about if it's 
you know, more than a, a certain amount of seconds, YouTube will flag it. The YouTube bots. Yeah, and it's not very many seconds either. So uh, anyway, that was one reason to change it. But ultimately, you know, Free Talk Live always, has always had that sort of heavy metal sound, at least in the intros. So the same newsy beds are actually on our outros still, but they're so quiet, it's hard to even notice them. And that was sort of the intention behind those beds was to just make it so that the hosts knew that there was a break coming up. And so therefore, well, it makes it a little less obvious, I guess, to those listening. But now you know the secrets. So our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Of course, we've always told you sort of how things work behind the scenes That's on Free right. Talk Live. That's right. you got Live. to make the producers happy. Otherwise, let's go to Lucas. He's still on with us here in North Carolina listening to Talk Radio 850. Uh, Lucas, you had talked about the neighbors, and uh, we were discussing... You know, why it is that people don't use violence against one another on a neighbor to neighbor basis, but that somehow that doesn't necessarily track uh, when it comes to people using the government. You gave some examples of some people definitely aggressing against their neighbor by polluting their property. And we had sort of gotten just started on this discussion of pollutants and being a good neighbor. Lucas, did you want to share any other thoughts? Go ahead. Well, I guess I just think about the level of complexity this can reach. For example, if I live on the border in my state, then a uh, an individual in another state could create pollution that affects me. And now, what court am I going to go to that's going to understand what the relationship is? And on top of it, with something like pollution, uh, air pollution, for example, how do I demonstrate a harm which to courts is either a loss of life, so somebody's got to die or go to the hospital, or a monetary cost, uh, and if I have to wait until I have to go to the hospital to be able to prove in court uh, that I've suffered harm, then, uh, yeah, I have to wait till my life is risked in order to be able to stop the guy from pumping smoke in my face. Well, I think that, um, you know, that harm does have to be quantifiable um, in order to, uh, you know, for for anybody to do anything about it, if it's an unquantifiable harm, then well, you know, that's a difficult thing to handle. I mean, if, uh, Brock, nobody supports well, breathing well, smoke we, in uh, without consent. Yeah, I mean, but how many years did they have to take to figure out that smoking is bad for you? Mm -hmm. It took some time, but we we well, know that campfires are uh, cause cancer too. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's right. So, but in a libertarian world, we wouldn't be banning cigarettes, and we wouldn't be monitoring the amount of pollution put out. Oh, by, cigarettes uh, could absolutely be banned in a, in a libertarian world. I mean, we they could we, be banned inside who's, um, businesses. Who's going to force people to not smoke? Your personal who's bouncer. Who's going to force businesses to? You're right, exactly. So my bouncer is going to come with me, and tell everybody else to quit. No, smoking. no, no. You guys are you miscommunicating world. with uh, with Lucas? Maybe Look, I'm what they were saying. No, they were miscommunicating with you, Lucas. What they were saying was was that. You, if you owned a place, could tell people they are not allowed to smoke in your establishment. That's what they oh, were trying sure. trying to say. But, that you would not be banning it across could, the society. How, okay. how if, I, if I've got a, an establishment and an establishment next to mine is say producing uh, smoke smoke from their barbecue in such great quantities that it runs right through my business, uh, and people can't breathe as a result. They're literally choking. Am I obliged to buy all the things I need to clear the air that he polluted? No, I think that uh, at that point he's, he's created a, a tort against you. And um, at that point, you you know, whatever systems come into play. I have pl to demonstrate some kind of financial harm, which is easy to do, again, if I'm a business. But if I'm an individual and not a business just sitting at my house, how do I prove I've suffered a harm from that smoke the same way that people I mean, with property. torts um, in the past prove those things that you have a certain level of, of comfort in your home that you should uh, and on your property that you should be able to have um, now obviously it's not uh, it's it's not ultimate in the sense that he's there's some kind of pollution is going to go over uh, borders whatever that pl amount of pollution is like the guy's got a, there's a situation in Pinellas County going on right now in Florida where they've uh, the police have told a homeowner that he can't uh, have bar barbecue yeah his barbecue he can't barbecue because it's too stinky or something and uh, yeah, we, you know, uh, and these what, things have to where do you draw the line so I mean if I'm burning leaves in my backyard and and the smoke so, is going through my neighbor's yard I mean is that pollution or do I have to be out there burning the whole forest down to actually create the amount of pollution that's going to register right. on well, the list. Well, let's take, it, take well, it from an alternate perspective. Let's say it's it, it, invisible, odorless radon gas that a business is releasing next door to my property under a system that doesn't recognize before the fact 
the danger of radon gas, which is what we do here. We have an EPA that says we're going to try and catch you releasing any amount of radon gas. We're not going to wait for somebody to be harmed by it before we stop you. That's a regulation. If we find you're yeah. running a system that's – right. If you're running a system that is commonly known for releasing that gas, then we're going to stop you before any harm occurs. We're going to go ahead and tell you you can't do that. It's illegal. But in a libertarian system where you have to take it to the court, then I have to wait until that gas hurts me or my family before I can take them to court because otherwise I got nothing other that's, than – That's but, not but, exactly well, true. The so, of a thing that didn't hurt me is there. This is precedent. I have to wait till I'm hurt. So it's precedent, right? I mean, that's what uh, you know. Courts basically have, and in a... uh, right, the courts don't have a precedent to say you can't have a gun because someone got shot no, with a they gun. They don't before. have that precedent, no. Right? But they do have the precedent they can't to stop say you from that... building that. I'm just gonna put him on hold for a moment. He just keeps talking. Well, they, they, they do have the precedent to say this thing is poisonous. It comes across the uh, the land, and therefore there's this amount of uh, harm that's been caused in in whatever case. So the 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 idea that there's still a tort seems valid to me. Now, obviously, you're not going to have a monopoly court system. You're going to have people in competition. Hopefully, that competition means they're going to provide better service to both sides in that circumstance. But it's pretty obvious to every arbiter out there that if you're pumping out deadly radon gas, that um, that may even be criminal, not just uh, civil. And you know what? We're always finding out, even with our regulations, we're always finding out 10 years later that something that's been okay has been killing us for the last 20 years. Well, I mean, plus, I mean, how is the EPA going to know if somebody's pumping out radon gas? It's not like they've got people going around sniffing that out. We're coming up. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. At 30dayfoodsupply.com, two of our top priorities are providing quality food at a reasonable price and protecting your security. When you call 800-700-2184, we will never record your phone call and never ask for your personal information, like how much food you have stored or where you keep it. We'll also never store your credit card information and email address on a computer. Your email address will never be shared or sold. We'll never limit the number of boxes you can purchase. We'll never use outside packers or use relabeled food from another company. Our meals are naturally high in fiber, carbs, and protein, and everything is packed with oxygen absorbers and mylar pouches under our direct supervision at our plant in Oregon. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low by buying directly from their producers in Oregon and then passing the savings on to you. Call 800-700-2184 and purchase our 30-day 90-serving emergency food supply for only $99 and $10 ships your entire order to the lower 48. Visit our website 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 800-700-2184. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com at 800-700-2184. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners so you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029.
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Yeah! This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free. You can join us here, talk about property rights or immigration, whatever's on your mind. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. It's Skype username, lrn.fm. Uh, let's talk more about this here in a moment. Uh, also want to go to your calls first. We want to come back to the issue of property rights. Lucas was on the line. He dropped off during the break. I was going to bring him back, give him a chance to say one more thing. Uh, so he can call another night if he want to, wants yeah, I, to continue. I thought he was bringing up some really, really good points. These are good questions. And, you know, how do you handle the idea of protecting your property without uh, the government system that we know of today? Now, Mark, it sounded like what you were referring to would, would be the courts of some sort would still exist. There would be a way to challenge without the state, the state as we know it, uh, in your vision for society, there would be some sort of court system, arbitrators or you know whatever, that you'd be able to bring a tort, as you talked about, with somebody or against someone who was uh, polluting, allegedly, your property. Whether it be from uh, Conan uh, setting his leaves on fire in the backyard to somebody letting out a bunch of radon uh, into, uh, into the air. And what, yeah, big companies, which are probably doing that anyways as we speak. Right, because he was talking like the EPA was protecting him from that somehow. And I'm sorry, but you know the EPA doesn't have little men with radon meters walking around in the streets and checking these things out. No, they're going. They, what maybe not. Uh, necess- well, they're going to pork fest, or they're going to be in the next in the following years. You think the EPA is going to come. Well, to pork I fest? mean, there you 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 saw some thugs this year, and there's no telling Those are what the tax thugs- revenue agents from the state of New Hampshire. Well, they're probably calling their buddies up as we speak, and they're like, Maybe. "Hey, look, you know what? I we can't necessarily do. It. We all go at them, and you know, at one time, you know, maybe we can figure something out." Well, I'm not so worried about that, and we'll cross that bridge uh, when we come to it. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, there's no policing agency that can stop every crime. Um, what they do is, is the intention is, is that they put a regulation out there and then they attempt to stop them when they can. Um, right, the EPA, it has to be reported. There the has EPA to be may or may not do that, but it is a vilified agency, probably to some extent, rightly so. Right, like a lot of people hate the EPA, and it isn't because they're always 100 percent of the time on the right on the side of right, right? Like some mm. of the times they do a lot of crazy, silly things. And whose pocket are they in? And one needs to consider that these regulations- the with money. Yeah. yeah the, the regulations have unintended consequences. I like to give this example, which is I was looking at a piece of property one time down in Florida, and um, I was talking to the real estate agent, and he said something to the effect of, look, if you see a scrub jay on your land, shoot it and bury it because it's a protected species and if uh, they find out it's here then you know basically they take your land from you or tell you there's all kinds of things you can't do with it um so you know these are the consequences of these regulations and one needs to understand i'm thinking of a very uh typical uh uh, occurrence here in the area and probably across the u.s is that uh, you can't take a refrigerator to the dump to the scrap metal with freon in it Okay. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? You go, people bleed them. Do you go pay someone to bleed it for you? No, you stick a screwdriver in it. And that's what everyone does. So, I mean, their their regulation uh, to keep Freon out of the out of the environment. Uh, it's putting more into it's it. It's putting more into it. Let's go to Michael. He's in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live listening via LRN.FM. Hello, Michael. Hey, guys. Hey, um, I'll be short and sweet, but um, maybe you'll keep me on long enough so I can hear your answer. Um, Ian and Mark. 
how how do you all get along and run a business together? <laughs> um. So Ian, largely, uh, I like. I think we know each other's boundaries. Imagine for a second, brothers, right? Like, there's two people, males, that have put put in a, sit- a situation that they didn't ask for, uh, particularly, and they have, uh, you know, the, just circumstances have dictated that they are going to be together. And those brothers come to an equilibrium. They love each other in the sense that brothers love each other, but they may not necessarily get along all the time or even most of the time. That's kind of how our business is. We get business done because, well, we both want to get business done and we understand how we have to work with each other. Ian knows he has to give at cer- certain times, even though he doesn't do it on the air, he does in real life. And I know that there's certain areas that Ian's just not going to give on. So uh, we, we just have our boundaries. And Ian? That's a fine answer. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, was it? Why did you ask the question? Because we, we somehow, argue all the time. sometimes well, I, we have arguments y'all, y'all on seem, on the air. They're pretty. Yeah, they they like get pretty wild. Arguments on the air. Yeah, and you know, and, and like I mean, I like Ian. I've seen all the freaking videos and stuff like that. And you know, just, I mean, it, it kind of stems from the last week. Uh, last week, when you know, uh, Mark said, you know, he kind of went behind his back and brought Chris back on. Um, so that, that's kind of where it comes from. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I see where you're coming from. Uh, so- Ian did apologize for that one, um, and I think that was a mistake on his part. But um, you know, nonetheless, well, you I had mean, him on yesterday too, and you were on there with him. Yeah, so what, it's, what do I do? <laughs> I lost. Uh, I guess you could walk. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I do have that option. Yeah. Um, I could continue to, to uh, sell the ads and, and make the revenue from selling the ads, but uh, I could give up my uh, space on the, the show. Ian could decide whether or not he has he wants to deal with that. Um, you know, he could choose not to have Cantwell on in order to get me back, or um, I could just, you know, go someplace. You could just agree that Cantwell was punished enough, as it seems like you have. Yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's, I closed, a, it's a closed matter. I think it could be a closed matter. Um, we'll see how he does I'm in the future. Start, I'm not trying to start anything up. I just, you know, was just <laughs> really? curious. That's all, really. <laughs> yeah, really, I wasn't trying to start anything up. I just was curious. Well, you know, it, it's a show to some extent, right? Like, so, you know, hopefully you can turn off the microphones and still, uh, you know, appreciate one another. And I think that that's, that's true. Uh, but, you know, that's not to say that Mark's faking it when he acts the way he does here on Free Talk Live. I mean, I, he really does believe he's the king of the universe or something like I, that. I hold back um, in real life. Like, you know, everybody's got filters, right? Uh-huh. Uh, I attempt to remove filters. and I, I think Ian does the same thing. I think he just becomes more rigid, frankly, on the air. Like, he doesn't change his mind more. Like, he thinks that that's removing a filter when, in fact, it's it's really just a personality defect. But whatever. Um, uh, you know, what I do is, uh, in real life, I've got the filters I've got. You know, I don't come out slick out of my mouth to my wife. Um, but, <laughs> but I certainly will to Ian on the air. That's Ian, Ian's uh, Asperger's uh, syndrome that kicks in. That you know, <laughs> He says he doesn't have he took a test to the internet that says he doesn't have Asperger's. I think I think a lot of libertarians have it by the way. It's uh it's, I think taking a test to the internet to see whether you have it or not <laughs> is kind of the definition of Asperger's. You know, hey, but here's one of the things I've what? seen here's one of the things I've seen in the chat. A lot of people notice that you guys get into it and you really get into it. Of course, Ian doesn't seem like he really does. Mark gets into it, and then Ian just keeps pushing the buttons. Push, 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 push. <laughs> and then the break happens, and then everything stops. People, yeah. headphones go off. People look back down at their computers. They go typing away, or they go walk off and get a drink or make some Doritos or something. Yep. And it's like, what What happened? It's just, and then two minutes later, the show kicks back on. And it's Round like it three. Ne- it's, yeah. it's like it never happened. Like hitting the play button. It's yeah. like it never happened. So I mean I I that's good for writing, right? Well that's that's we'll that's see. the question. It's like are you guys acting? No, absolutely not. And I don't I think don't so cuz I've seen you guys enough times. I know the first time I ever heard you guys uh fighting. This is before I even moved to New Hampshire and I was scared for Ian. <laughs> he is a murderer, convicted murderer. Right. That's a, Ian's job is to go to convicted killer, right? And like he, he seems to relish it. On a nightly basis. Hey, thanks, Michael, for your call. I appreciate the concern. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Welcome back. And you can join us here on the Radio Waves. This is Free Talk Live. Oh, yeah, and we've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. 
All right, so suddenly Walmart, eBay, Amazon, everybody wants to ban the rebel flag. Well, the rebel flag is an important part of American history. The rebel flag is still a long-standing symbol of Southern pride and Southern heritage. So if the big retailers want to play into political correctness and try to deny the history of America, let them. Go to ourflags.com. That's R, like rebel, R, the letter R, ourflags.com. Get your rebel flag before they actually do outlaw the things, huh? Ourflags.com. That's ourflags.com. Go now. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Talk Live, you can bring up anything that you want. You can join us here toll-free at 855-453. Uh, we have, have had a conversation about property rights and what it would be like without the government around to supposedly protect you from those evil polluters. Of course, anybody that's ever been to Los Angeles knows that the government's not doing such a great job of protecting people from pollution. In fact, the uh, there's plenty of pollution around. That's why there's smog all over the place uh, in L.A. And uh, that's just one example. Of course, California is one of the places where there's the, the largest amount of regulatory uh, environmental reg regulation going on. So 
really, if you look at the way the government treats the environment, they're not very good stewards of it. Um, Dr. Mary Ruard, who we had on the show on Sunday night, has a great book called Healing Our World, where she talks about how it's actually the government that's the largest polluter in America. You Isn't that funny? Look at like, the U.S. military. People look to the government to prevent pollution when they're the largest polluters. Yeah. The, the state, states all around the world tend to be the largest polluters. I believe she specifies it's the military, not necessarily the states themselves, but the military is like I don't mean the, 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 the large... 50 states. I mean uh, states as in organizations, oh. uh, you know, go governments. Governments around the world. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but, you know, one of the things she said, if I'm recalling correctly, and maybe she's updated the statistic because this was from her previous versions of the book, but when she wrote the original versions, it was the military was uh, more of a polluter than the top four corporate polluters combined. So there's one example for and, you. And takers of human life. There's that too. So let's go to your calls and thoughts here. Max in Washington. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mac. Hey there. Uh, Hi there. You, just, uh, you caught my ear when you talked about the EPA because uh, uh, I used to uh, commute by ferry um, and it's about a one-hour ride, and I used to ride with this gal who worked for the EPA, and we'd sit together and talk pretty much every day. And um, she would talk about her job from time to time, and she would say something about writing permits. And I never really questioned her about it at first, and then finally one day I guess the curiosity just was piqued, and I said, what do you mean writing permits? What do you, what do, you do anyway? What do you do with the EPA anyway? And she says, well, I write permits so that uh, they, she didn't say it in this way, but this is exactly what she was saying. She said, I write permits so that businesses can pollute. So her job wow. basically was let's look at what the, how much pollution the business wants to dump into the environment. Let's look at the laws, uh, compare the two, and if there is uh, – if the business wants to dump more pollution than what the law allows, then we'll write the per a permit for the business. And that is all she did seven, uh, five days a week, 40 hours a week. That's all she did was write permits so the businesses could break the law, basically. Did, did she explain <laughs> why uh, her department was uh, behaving that way? Did she say where the where maybe how they were being funded, or uh, you know why were they why were they, why were they behaving in that manner? Her department. Uh, you know, I don't know. This has been like 20 years or so. Uh, I can't remember if we got, got into that. I was pretty much a good little status back then, and I really didn't even think or talk about politics very much. I certainly didn't know anything about economics, so even if she had provided an answer, I'm not sure if I would have been able to, to parse out exactly what she was saying, you know, in a in a way that, you know, would make sense to, to us. But, was that a uh, shocker, yeah, though, I mean, I did, when, you, when you heard that from oh, her? Oh, yeah, it was still mind-blowing, of course, yeah. And then not long after that, I started getting into Harry Brown, and Harry Brown, uh, the libertarian candidate for, uh, uh, for president back in 96 and 2000, uh, for your listeners who don't know who he is, they should look him up. Um, and, and he used to, uh, he cited, very often cited this Boston Globe expo, this uh, expose they did about the EPA. I think it was a five-part piece that they ran uh, over the course of five Sundays, maybe it was four, uh, where they just blew the lid off the EPA, and of course... There was never any apology, and as far as I know, nothing was ever done about it. I, I, I don't know. I can swear to that, but I would guess not. Government doesn't tend to move in that direction, do they? That's kind of the uh, thing about working for the government is you never have to say you're sorry. Mac, anything yeah, else you want to share go. tonight? No, that's it. Uh, talk to you guys later. Hey, right, Mac, by. before you stand go, um, uh, send, yeah, me, send me an email at mark at freetalklive.com with your telephone number. I want to talk to you about something. Sure. All right. No problem. Thanks, Mac. Uh, toll free number here tonight for you to bring up whatever's on your mind is 855 450 free. So, uh, any other comments on the whole property rights, how to solve torts and disputes without this the state? A, this is a conversation we're going to keep having and having and having. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's an important one, right? It, uh, because these are even things that we don't know how to, because, I mean, these, these things haven't happened yet. They're, we don't have a uh, an ar arbitrary system in, in effect set up that can actually replace the current court system. So, I mean, th we're just kind of theorizing right now. Well, okay. So, um, my yeah, th I think that's exactly what this is, is this theory. Um, mm -hmm. What you can't say is that the ideas of liberty don't work because they haven't been tried. Or, right? that, they're, yeah, or they're not a better idea because right now anything – is better than what we're dealing with right now. It's just no one can wrap their brain around the fact that there are other options 
Well, uh, you, you just got to make them happen. The United States court system may be better. The you know the English common law system, which is around which the United States court system is based, um, may be better than other forms of uh, arbitration in other countries. But throughout history, there have been voluntary forms of arbitration, binding or, uh, binding out vo- forms of voluntary arbitration, and they have existed. I don't know what they all look like. I don't need to. Because what we know, uh, what we know is, is we're getting poor customer service out of uh, U.S. courts. Just about everybody's unhappy with them, um, and uh, you know, so you're, if if competition's allowed, generally goods and services get better, customer services better, prices are lower when you have competition. Except, except, of course, Mark Devil's Advocate. Uh, the only people who are going to get the best justice are the ones who can afford to pay yep. the best arbiters. Who are getting it now? Well, that's I, how it is now, right? The thing you you can't make the ar- um, the argument that rich people are going to get better justice under a um, more liberty oriented system because we don't know. It's never been tried, and we currently have a terrible system where poor people are run over all the time. So it's it is and a, the corporations are given preference and so on and so forth. And this goes right back to the pollution thing that you know who is going to do the most damage? Who's going to do the most pollutant damage to you? And it's going to be these big corporations who already are steamrolling us with current regulations, current yeah. government. So, I mean, A great example of that, of course, is the BP oil spill from a few years ago. If you recall, the Gulf of Mexico. You, got, you slipped right out of it. This was a big, big, unintended. big environmental kind of disaster situation, and they were protected from liability by the federal government. I believe their maximum liability, if I'm recalling this correctly, I believe I remember the, ter- the number 75 million as far as that's what they would have to uh, to they, pony up to the cleanup operations. They did and have to give more than that, though. They, they did? They had to give more than that, but that doesn't mean that um, – but but the, that's just the federal government decided that number. There by no means did they have to pay every tort created okay. by their act. In no way, shape, or form did they have to make everybody whole. Yeah, that's true. The government's doing that. Why? Because they made a sweetheart deal with BP in the first place. Because big organizations tend to collude. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So, uh, we had actually originally started, this whole conversation started because of Bernie Sanders, if you want to get back to that. Well, we actually, we wanted to talk about, um, we were going to talk about immigration. Um, Right, which is what we were talking about with with Bernie Sanders, who's actually against the idea of open borders. Was there something else about immigration you wanted to add? Go well, ahead. Um, a lot of people. So I used to be on the sort of the, the pro, uh, uh, you know, controlled borders side. So did I. And I long think time ago. This is the default position. Free Talk Live's position that uh, the borders should be open, that free people should be able to cross borders freely um, without, you know, governments getting in the way. Because if you, free people can't cross the border of free countries freely, then you don't have free countries and you don't have free people. Um, that position is one that evolved for both of us. And I'd like to give... Um, what about re- you, Conan? I don't remember. I think I've always been... You've always been freedom to travel? I've always leaned towards the freedom to travel, but I don't think this is something I ever really thought about. Mm. Uh, I was a military guy, and I come. I grew up in a military family, so we've always been about keeping the peace, you know, and uh, you know, fighting whatever wars ne- we were necessary to uh, to keep the people back here on the home Pick front. Pick up free. a gun and do what the politicians tell you to, right? But I've always <laughs> been very, very uh, friendly with uh, my my people of my friends of minority uh, leaning. I mean, I've I've never really. I grew, I grew up in a very open family. Lots of minorities, lots of Mexicans, um, you know, Amer- Amer- Mexican Americans are, you know, for border security. Um, this isn't an issue that necessarily has to do with ethnicity. It's more an issue about freedom, freedom to travel. It's and about I wanna, protectionism yeah. from their pers- from the people who want to lock it down. Yep. So I want to come. I'm, I want to give you know my my growth on that issue. Maybe it can help other people too. All right. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free, and we've got just enough time for you if you call now on Free Talk Live. If you could choose any school in the country to earn your college degree and be on your way to a better life, would you choose one the Wall Street Journal recognizes as producing some of the best qualified graduates? Or one the Princeton Review ranks as a leader in undergraduate education? Or maybe one the U.S. News & World Report names among the most innovative schools in the country? Now, you don't have to choose. At Arizona State University, we want to help you learn to thrive in life. At ASU Online, we offer over 100 graduate and undergraduate programs on your time and schedule. You receive the exact same curriculum, degree, and prestigious faculty as the on-campus students, and we're universally recognized as one of the innovators in online learning technologies. 
For information, call 1-800-595-9736. U.S. News & World Report ranked ASU in the top 10 best places to earn an online degree. So learn to thrive with ASU Online. Call today at 1-800-595-9736. That's 1-800-595-9736. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Affordable health insurance was the promise of Obamacare, but for many, the government mandate caused more problems than it solved. And I want to tell you about a truly affordable alternative, Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare bypasses doctor and hospital panels, giving you the freedom to choose. 100% coverage up to $1 million per year per occurrence includes dental, vision, pharmacy, and holistic care. Call 1-800-714-6993. 1-800-714-6993. 1-800-714-6993 today. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Keenvention.info. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Final segment of this edition of the program we got time for you if you want to join us here at 855 450 free whether you want to discuss uh, polluting other people's property and how to handle that without the idea of the state around to force things on people or immigration as we're kind of uh, coming back around to here our toll-free number is 855 450 free and don't forget that of course if you need gold and silver you can go to gold.freetalklive.com and hook up with some wonderful uh, hand-picked gold and silver pieces from Midas Resources. These guys have been doing gold and silver for a long time, and right now might be a good time to buy, given the prices are down quite a bit. Uh, So go to gold.freetalklive.com or call them toll-free at 877-857-9938. That's 877-857-9938. And uh, once again, that's gold.freetalklive.com. Mark, I've been doing a little bit of uh, testing with purse.freetalklive.com, and you had had an objection from a listener earlier tonight that you were explaining. And maybe I misunderstood the explanation, but it seemed to center around shipping costs on small items being a concern. I added a small item, like a $2 cable, to my wish list 
and then I imported that into Purse, and it imported it without the shipping cost. So that tells me that it's the buyer who buys that for you that's covering the shipping cost. So they would buy that with the intention of getting your Bitcoin later on, and they're obviously willing to pay for the shipping cost in that case. So I hope that answers the question for you. Purse.freetalklive.com. And I'm sure anybody that actually has a question can certainly send it directly to the customer service folks at Purse. They've always been awesome with answering questions and have been super, super helpful. So, Mark, you wanted to talk about your experience uh, coming around on the issue of immigration. Yeah. I'm, so, I mean, obviously, uh, what people th there's a few different reasons that people um, support you know, immigration controls. And so for one of them, some of them will be sort of, they take our jobs, right? Well, uh, you know, my, my theory, I, I've had to sort of pop the rivets on these ideas. Well, first off, the job isn't yours. Your job is not yours. Uh -huh. Your job is an agreement between your employer and you that you will do work for a certain amount of money. And he doesn't have to hire you. And he doesn't, and, but, but it's not your employer. I, I guess it's your, the job is, like, for instance, um, if something's broken in my house, I get to choose whichever um, repair person I want to choose. There is no repair person that can say, that's my job to fix. And if they do, they're going, it, you know, they, they'll often think that, well, that person doesn't have a license, or that person's too young, or that person's from the wrong country. Well, those are just crappy excuses for somebody who can't compete. All right. So your job isn't yours, and my job isn't mine. Um, the that's the they take their, our jobs thing. Mm. Um, some people will claim that, uh, well, you know, um, people come over here and uh, you, you know they take welfare. Well, fine. I've never advocated for uh, people, you know, you being robbed for somebody else, uh, you know, somebody else to uh, to live. I don't think that that makes sense. Um, what I believe is, is that free people should be able to move across borders freely so that they can work and support themselves and their families. Um, I'm, I'm not addressing that issue. That you have a welfare problem. You don't have an immigration problem. Please stop complaining about immigrants when your complaint is about welfare. So, I mean, this is an issue of premises and making cogent arguments. So there you go. Put that one aside. Uh, some people will say crime. Uh, American Conservative Magazine uh, looked at uh, crime. They couldn't figure out what illegals do, uh, you know, one crime versus another. But they looked at crime between Hispanics and whites and blacks. And they were able. what they found is Hispanics commit no more demographically, cons um, commit no more crimes than whites do. You can say that Hispanics in this country tend to be male and they tend to be young. So therefore. Hispanic criminals, you mean? No, Hispanics. Hispanics in oh, really? Well, because people come across the border tend to be um, tend to be male, okay. so there's a, a, a disparity. Um, so yes, males commit qu more crimes than females, and young people commit more crimes than old people. But you have to fiddle with the demographic numbers in order to get the the uh, conclusion you want. So the fact is, you look at it fairly. Hispanics commit no more crimes than whites. Um, so that 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 argument's out the window. Um, that somehow it would overload the system if anybody was able to come here and wanted to come here. Okay, I get where you're coming from. It could very well overload the system. But who am I to say that there shouldn't be, um, that, that people shouldn't be able to sort of build their own house, housing and live the way they, um, they can live um, in order to be able to work in this country? A lot of people don't like the idea of a slum. I think a slum is the reality of a more free place. I'm not advocating for slums. What I'm saying is, is that poor people are going to go from places where they don't have freedom, places they do have freedom. They're going to live how they can live. And, uh, you know, if there's an interim step you want, I, I say open up places like um, Detroit and uh, Memphis and New Orleans to uh, people who want to come work here. If, you, if you're worried about slums, we got slums already. Just let them populate them. Well, yeah, it's government that uh, Their house is completely unpopulated in this country. Um, they could be filled with people who are poor people from other countries who want to work to make a better life for themselves like they have for centuries in this country. And lots and lots of real estate just yep. open. Deserts and, field, and plains and prairies and, and uh, forests. There's a lot of it. Government yep. leads to blighted areas and slums by impoverishing people, taking the money that they earn from them, preventing them from being able to get a leg up in life, uh, regulations preventing people from building things anew or repair, even repairing the things that they currently have. Well, without I, would, I would say people 
people run themselves into a downward spiral eventually because they have that option. They have government as an option. Well, sure, the welfare system is definitely uh, encouraging misbehavior and, and, and democracy in general. It's just, it's just a yeah. it's just a way for people to vote themselves more and more and more stuff until that, hey. We're so far into this hole, we have to move out of Massachusetts and move to New Hampshire well, but even if you because, have, it's, because they're freer there. Even if you have the money uh, to do an upgrade to your home, you may choose not to, simply because if the government guys see it, they're going to increase the valuation of your property and therefore increase the property taxes. I've made those um, that same consideration that you're talking about. And what people don't seem to understand is, is that more people is a better economy, whether they're poor people or rich people or whatever. Obviously, more rich people is an even better economy than more poor, poor people. But nonetheless, more people is um, makes for a better economy. And that's, uh, you know, that's one of the benefits of allowing people to come here. And so if you just... What, at some point or another, you come down to the point that, well, I'd like to keep out convicted killers and people who have drug-resistant tuberculosis. Okay, fine. So you want to keep these people out of the country. I'm with you. How do you keep them out? Because at this point, the uh, Border Patrol system has failed to keep out tens of millions of people out of this country. They're going to fail to keep them out, too. Jonathan is in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live, listening online. Hello, Jonathan. Hey, this is going to be completely off the wall, to be honest with you. I was listening to yesterday's episode on Stitcher before I called in. Okay. Um, so I don't know how much you all have been following it, but Rand Paul, he's pushing to defund Planned Parenthood right now, and he actually has finally got the Senate to agree to vote on his, on his amendment. And you guys probably see this post on Facebook from him. He's always urging people to call into their senators. I don't know how much that actually does, so, but I do. It takes five minutes. And I figure, you know, what the heck. You actually so get to talk to your made... senator? Are you, are you talking about an well, email or an actual conversation? No, no way. No, you call into their D.C. office yeah. and you, most of the time you get a voicemail. But today I actually got to talk to some chick in the in his D.C. office. An intern. Um, an aide. To, yeah. Yeah. I talked to, I called David Perdue and, got, and that lady was fairly nice. I, she didn't tell me whether or not. How David Perdue would be voting, but she said no, she, she doesn't know. Long. She just works in the office. Yeah, he's right. She said he hasn't made a public statement. He's yet. already made his so mind up. Called, and... Oh yeah, I know. But then I called Johnny Isaacson's office, and man, I got some broad who was just rude. She at first she asked me who I am, like I shouldn't be calling <laughs> into the office because I'm just some guy. And then and then I told I just told her that you know. We, meaning we, the voters, you know, we're going to be watching, you know, the guy, us that are more active, we're going to be watching how the, how this, how our senators vote on this. And she says, we, who is we? I'm you like, must respect my authority. <laughs> right. So I just, I just said, look, I'm just a concerned voter. I'm wanting to pass along a message to my senator um, and try to get an idea of how he's voting. So my question here is, Whenever senators ask you to call in to your senators, does that really ever do anything? Do you think they ever actually get the messages? I don't believe it does. If enough people, if enough people call, no. Do you think here's it's here's my evidence around? for you that it doesn't do anything. So a few years ago, you may recall during the, I believe it was the toward the end of the Bush administration, they were doing the bailouts. Remember that? The billions yeah. and billions yeah. of dollars or whatever. Uh, they were bailing yep. out banks. They were bailing out auto companies. It was just bailouts all over the place. And there were there were statistics coming out saying that the senator types were receiving 80 to 90 percent of their calls were against the bailout. So they were getting a load of calls about this issue where it's pretty clear what the American people wanted, which was do not bail out these banks and these corporations. And, you know, they did it anyway. So same I thing, say, same thing here in Keene. Save your breath. Thanks for the call, Jonathan. We'll see you tomorrow. Freetalklive.com. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. 
Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn, you'll be inspired, you'll make new friends, you'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit FreeRoss.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Rebel Love Show is next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, July 28, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.62 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,095 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $295. Antiwar.com reports, FBI arrest of terror suspects on extremely flimsy pretext with charges stemming almost entirely from allegations by informants and the provisions by the FBI of fake weapons to the suspects have become something of a running joke. Attempts to prosecute these people are often extremely difficult as the allegations are vague and the evidence to support them is usually non-existent. Cases collapse and the FBI has to roll the dice by charging them with something else, hoping something eventually stops. Sticks. Yet officials are defending speedy detentions of people under surveillance, even when there's no real evidence of wrongdoing, insisting that they are surveilling so many people at this point that it's getting kind of unwieldy and that the Islamic State suspects are considered so unpredictable that they just can't afford to wait until those guys actually do something wrong that they can build an actual case around. One top official rejected the idea that not being able to prosecute detainees for lack of evidence was a problem, saying that's the price you have to pay to prevent violence. The arrest first ask questions later strategy is drawing some criticism for being an inefficient way to gather intelligence. Bizarrely, there